All right, and just to do an intro here really quick, uh, I'm Jeff Hoagland, as many of you I'm sure will know. I'm joined tonight by Carter Noble, who has uh, experience doing uh, Pokemon VCG battling. VCG, for those not familiar, stands for uh, Video Game Championship. It's the acronym that's uh, referred to describe the uh, Pokemon video game battling, which has been for a long time, right? Like, does this go back all the way back to, like, Game Boy stuff, or, like, when you own it started exactly? Okay, so the actual, like, supported uh, VGC format is only specifically doubles. Um, there's also a dedicated, like, singles ladder that when you go into rank battles here, it'll separate between singles and doubles. Um, but the actual VGC format, I believe, goes back to, like, 2013 or 2014, somewhere in there, um, in Gen 4, where doubles formats became, like, the preferred uh, typing, basically. Uh, th so... Before that, there was still a like competitive scene, but it was all singles. And personally, I don't really care for singles. Uh, I feel like there's a lot more counterplay and technicality to doubles, and that's why I prefer them. Um, yeah, it's, plus, it like, seems like there would be more more depth with two mons on each side. Yeah, there's there's a lot more like team building um, and just various various things like that. Where in singles, it's a lot of okay, I have to counterplay exactly what you have going on but i also have to like next level you to make sure that you don't like outdo me and it's i don't really find it that fun um doubles is just where it is it, my bread and butter um oh. gen 3 is my favorite generation and that was one of the like main things they added in that game was the introduction of doubles battles so it's just i'm glad to see that this is the preferred format Sweet. All right. So, should we start with casual battles, or should we go just go right into ranks? I assume we'll be at the no, bottom. No, just of the go. Ladder. Just go into ranks. Yeah, we're gonna um, be at the bottom. Especially since we're gonna be starting at the bottom of the ladder anyway. So, please observe the following rules: Team battles is made up of six different Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Once you earn or lose points based on the results of your battle, once you've gained a number, you'll go up a rank. Sweet. Ranks are sorted into tiers. Once you reach a new tier, you won't fall back on lower. Sweet. So we've got ranked floors. Yep. Are held during seasons or periods. Great. Players will reach the highest ranked and ranked will no longer battle, reach a higher. All right. Just telling us how a ladder works. So double battle. Yep. And I sent you three codes. What do you what do you want to start with? I'm assuming you want the Golduck team. I want the Golduck team. Yeah, you got me cool. you got me some of my favorite mods in there. We got a scissor and a polytoad and a Golduck, I believe. So Yep. Uh, you... so when you sent me the list of mods you wanted to play, I'm like, alright, I can I can work with this. These are Basically, um, the way this is going to work is it's going to showcase that just because a Pokemon isn't, like, the highest tier and, like, most playable doesn't mean you can't still have fun with it and you can't still showcase it. And it, it's still unique and has traits that you want to be able to do with it. Sweet. Um, I, I always show my opponents my team info. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I, I personally like it when people do because it lets me see what pieces of, like, tech they have on their pokemon and like what their actual sets are so if you want to cool if not whatever so if i say no neither of us will see each other's things and like this is basically it's basically like open deck list versus not kind of i believe they they won't see yours but i believe you have the option to see theirs interesting but grab it, it. you, you yes. won't see it until after the battle anyway so. oh we see it after it's no no so not before yeah. cool okay cool. yeah that's fine then and then... So I can just roll over to my rentals here. Yep, there we this go. Is my, these are my toads. Yep. So, uh, Golduck has an ability called Swift Swim that says when it's in rain, its speed stat is double. Uh, Politoed notably has the ability Drizzle, which, when it comes into battle, sets rain. So that's the, like, common pair of Swift Swim plus Drizzle Mon equals go super fast and blow them up. Okay, sweet. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, the static effect has synergy between the different mods when you're pairing them up, basically. Yep. So, um, because Golduck is going to be the fastest thing on the field, I have it EV to be faster than uh, max speed Reggie Eleki, which is the fastest thing in the format. Uh, you outspeed it by, I think, one or two points, so there's no way it can possibly be outsped. All right, so what do I, what do, I do here? Uh, that's a good question. I can't see the mons because they're under my face <laughs> all right i'm gonna move i'm gonna move you around okay okay so uh this matchup is really interesting because tyranitar sets sand which takes away our rain 
Um, so notably, like Tyranitar and Excadrill pair really well together because Excadrill has the ability Sand Rush, which is Swift Swim, but for sand. Uh, so Excadrill is going to try to be the fastest thing, just like uh, just like your your Golduck is. But I still think it's correct to have probably like Golduck and Rillaboom up front. So click um, Golduck. Uh huh. Okay. Enter, and then Rillaboom. And then you probably want uh, Scizor and then Politoed in the back here. And the play is to just prevent your opponent from, specifically weather mirrors like this, you want to be in control of the weather as long as possible. And more importantly, prevent your opponent from having the weather. Okay, so, so this is interesting. So we each have teams of six, but then we submit four for the actual battle? Correct. Okay. Uh, and on ladder, it's best of one. So if if you mess up sorry try again next time oh um, neat but, and sometimes there's so there's a best of three format where you choose a different four mons potentially or a different order correct. or lineup for them okay neat okay so this is this is kind of what i expected from our opponent uh, this is actually a really great lead for us hitmontop notably has fake out so it can potentially flinch one of our pokemon to prevent them from moving um but what we can do is we can dynamax the golduck here which is then going to make it where it can't be flinched. So if they fake out into that slot, their attack is wasted. And probably what we want to do is switch Rillaboom into Politoed, which will then get rid of their sand, set rain, and then Politoed's, uh, then because we switched in, Politoed doesn't get to attack this turn anyway. Okay, so I want to go fight, and you said I you want to Dynamax the Golduck? Uh huh. And probably just go for a Max Geyser into the Tyranitar, because okay. we want to get rid of their weather before they're able to take advantage of it. And then what do I want to do with this guy? Uh, really boom, we want to switch out into Politoed. So we we'll go, yeah, Pokemon into Politoed. Cool. All right, sweet. there's a timer that tells me that they're too quick. Yep, so in team preview uh, before the match, I believe you have a minute and a half. And then in game you have, I believe it's thirty seconds per turn. Oh, so this is what you're talking about by weather control. So because we switched <laughs> in the Politoed, we now get our weather, which is good for the gold buck. Correct. Okay, sweet. I'm figuring out the overlay as we go here. So apologies to people. Uh, yeah. Yeah, primarily when, when I'm streaming like ladder, I try to pull everything to the right because there is stuff over here to the left that is moderately important, but like not the upper right corner because that's where your opponent's Pokemon's health is. Does that okay. make sense? Yep. So notably, uh, they're going to Dynamax and Tyranitar, but hopefully we can still just one-shot this. And yeah, they go for the fake out into, into Golduck. It does minimal damage, not really significant, but because we're Dynamax, we don't get flinched, which is really what we were looking for. And that's really good damage on that Tyranitar. Unfortunately, um, we just activated his weakness policy, which whenever they get hit by a super effective attack, their, their uh, attack and special attack are both raised by two, which uh, essentially doubles their, their stat. Okay. So, Notably, they use Max Flare, which is also a form of weather control. Um, so the, the four typings, um, water, rock, ice, and and uh, fire, their max moves change the weather to their coordinating weather. Okay, so our gold ducks no oh. longer quick then. It, it's still going to be faster than Tyranitar because Tyranitar is extremely slow. Okay. So if we go, if we just, go for just a guys right again, yeah, yeah, we can we can actually change the weather back to rain. Sweet. Um, and then what's my my toad can do what? So we actually probably don't want to attack into the Tyranitar this turn, which sounds weird, but I have a feeling they're going to use Max Guard, which is just protect. So it's probably co uh, correct to attack into the Hitmontop this turn, okay. and then just and then go for an Icy Wind, which is a form of speed control. Oh, and that hits both of them anyway. Sweet. Yep, it hits both of them, and if it connects, it lowers their speed by one. So they're going to switch into the Rotom here, which is not a big deal, 
Notably, they don't protect the Tyranitar, which is really good for us, so we can pick up the KO there. Which, uh, which is really great because now we still have an extra turn of Dynamax, and theirs is because we uh, and their Dynamax their, is done. Yep. Yeah, because we knocked out their Pokemon, they don't get another Dynamax. And they quit. Cool. <laughs> that's that's what we're looking to do. Congratulations, Jeff. You have won your first match. That's great. I love how it's just like an error code when they quit instead of instead of like telling you they quit. Yeah. So what essentially what happens there is they disconnected their switch from their their uh, dock, which resets the uh, the internet connection, and so it it just makes them a log out of the game basically. Um, so what's great about that is we still get the count uh, for the win. Yeah, it, you can you can look at your opponent's team here if you really want. Uh, yep, weakness policy, eject button. So something I want to ask that I noticed is that um, the Mons in the team you shipped me were level 100, but in the battle they're level 50, so are all battles level 50? Yes, it doesn't matter what level they are uh, when they get sent in. They automatically are leveled to level 50. Um, the reason that they are all level 100 when I sent them to you is because they're all shiny, and I had to hyper train their stats to make them uh, to make their IVs 31. Okay, I watched a little bit of the videos sent me on IVs and EVs, and I kind of understand IVs from Pokemon Go. I know it isn't exactly the same, but I played that a it, little bit, and it has some similar it's ideas. Actually, really similar. So okay. on on Go, uh, you're from zero to 15. Whereas in game you're zero to thirty one. Okay. Um, so when you transfer stuff over from Go into Home or into Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee, um, their stats are doubled and then adds one. But notably in Pokemon Go, there's no speed stat, so their speed stat is just random. Okay. Um, but there is an item. There's a couple items. There's the bottle cap and a gold bottle cap, which you can only use on your Pokemon if they're level one hundred, um, which raises any of their stats to. It raises their IV of that stat to 31. So it makes it where any Pokemon, um, you, you don't have to breed for every Pokemon, such as like the Zapdos on our team. You can't breed Zapdos. So to okay. hunt down a six IV Zapdos would take forever. forever. Okay. Um, and I, I could be wrong, but I think you're more likely to find a shiny than you are to find a six IV in the wild. Um, trying to think of the stats on that. That would be... 32 to the 6th? Jeff, you're a math guy. What's what's that come to? 32 to the 6th. It's really big. <laughs> <laughs> Posing trainer's been found. All right, we're going to have to keep her undefeated. I don't have any pressure now, but we're on an undefeated streak, so I need you to help us <laughs> keep it up, okay? Okay, so notably they have Pelipper here, uh, which is the other rain setter that is currently legal. And they also have Gastrodon, which is a huge problem for us for Golduck because its ability makes it where any water attack that you would use is, instead of going to where it was going to do, goes into Gastrodon and is negated. So it might be correct to leave Golduck at home. Okay. And go probably do, like... Do you want like Zapdos if you expect them to have waters? Uh, probably Zapdos Rillaboom up front. Um, and our primary Dynamax target is probably going to be Zapdos this game. And okay. then we can have, like, Scizor and probably just Persian in the back and just leave the Rain Duo at home. Okay. That's neat. I really, I didn't realize the, like, the format here is really neat. Like, I just assumed we were going to play six versus six. And the, nope. the four, v, the, the seeing their team, seeing your team, mixing and matching, like, there's a lot of depth going on here to what's going on. I've, I've heard uh, Pokemon referred to as a lot to, it's a lot similar to like chess and the decision making always has an impact on the game. So th this lead is actually fantastic for us. Um, so we can Dynamax the, the Zapdos here and we can go for a Max Flare into the Durant, which pending that nothing goes terribly wrong will uh, one shot the Durant. Because it, it's steel and bug, which is four times weak to fly, uh, to fire. All right, so I'll max flare the this one. Oh, look, it even says super uh -huh. effective. God bless. Oh yeah, it, it's fantastic. And then the Milotic is the other problem here, which uh, notably when Rillaboom came out, it set up grassy terrain, 
which is fantastic because the the attack grassy glide gains a plus one priority if you're in grassy terrain so, so i just want to do this could, here yep go into the, the mylotic there okay so between really bloom's really good attack stat and grassy terrain and the rose incense it's holding grassy glide does uh approximately a billion damage to anything it hits I, I, I could be exaggerating that a little bit, but it's going to be a lot. Look at how angry my Zapdos is, Chad. Look at him. He's going for him. I know you can't tell, but that's a shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a shiny Zapdos in Pokemon Go, and you're right. It's like just the claws and the beak, right? It is super minimal. I think it's I think its skin is slightly different colored, but like it, its yellow is slightly darker. Okay, so it's... our opponent Dynamax the Durant here. Which that's but good that for us then, right? Doesn't matter. Yeah, because we're gonna hit it with the fire attack. Yeah. Um, notably, we're also faster, uh, and the reason you can tell that is because we Dynamax first. So they okay. protect, which has plus four priority. Uh, Grassy Glide has plus one priority, so their attack goes first. Our Grassy Glide doesn't do anything. Nailed our it. Heat wave goes off, and their Durant goes away. So I didn't I didn't realize that uh, the legendaries are in this game is uh, is Suicune a competitive Pokemon? Suicune is very good. Um, it has access to Tailwind, which makes it where your speed stat for your entire team is doubled for five turns, I believe. Um, and is one of the one of the best attacks you can have as a speed control method. Um, so here, here we can go for a max. Probably just a max airstream um, into probably the gastrodon. So and here's a here's a question I have from a. Uh, oh, sorry. I want to grassy glide this thing again. Probably. Uh, you could. It doesn't really matter either or. Um, so we have sun up. So any water attacks that they do are going to be halved, and they have double waters out. So Rillaboom just kind of takes over the game here anyway. So I can't imagine this game goes on for too much longer, to be 100% honest with you. So what, um, as just a like a metagame beginner question, um, what are the odds, um, or how often where like my Dynamax kills their Dynamax like this, do they come back where I have two more turns with the Dynamax? Is that just like usually the game, or is there a counterplay there? It is very difficult to, to come back from uh, losing your Dynamax. Um, in, in earlier formats, so we're, we're currently in Series 7. Um, they've had, over the last year, they've had a multitude of different uh, series or formats that they've, they've had as the, uh, the latter. And in earlier formats, there was a lot of just like random hypnosis. Random question. Stuff. These Max Lightnings are exactly the same, right? Even though they have different PP? Actually, no. Uh, okay. So you can press Y which is going to bring up the move info. Uh, so you see one is base 140 oh, and the other is... Oh, okay. So I want I want the bigger one. Correct. Uh, you can go into the Pelipper here, and then you can just grassy glide either of them. Yep. Um, the Pelipper most likely is holding a Focus Sash, so it's going to live on one HP. Mm, but okay. it can't really do anything to us. Uh, yep. The Gastrodon eats its Rindo Berry, which halves damage from a grass attack. But again, it's four times weak to it. And it's from a ga uh, from a Rillaboom and grassy terrain, so right. it just does infinite damage. So, in so one thing you said times four there, and one thing that I didn't realize for a long time that I learned is that's that's the same type attack bonus, right? Is where the four X comes from, or is that something else? Okay, so the the four times is based on their typing. Um, so Gastrodon is ground and water. Okay, and so, so just both are weak yeah. times. Okay. Yep. Um, the same type attack bonus is a one point time uh, a one point five times bonus to your base damage basically okay and that's so, where a lightning pokemon uses a lightning attack or an air pokemon correct. uses an air attack okay correct so since it's raining thunder will always hit same with hurricane which is oh, why that great. was great on our rain team yep uh, so we can just knock them out here uh grassy glide again uh because we said electric terrain now our grassy glide doesn't have plus one priority and they're just gonna draw this game out for another turn that's fine does Protect get both our attacks? Yes. Agreed. It's really annoying, especially since they're at 1 HP and they literally don't have a way of coming back. Way game. to steal my time. <laughs> Give them the wood hammer. 
Woodhammer is there just when when Grassy Glide's not enough, we can just do a little, little more damage. Um, YT believe, Kevin Game, thanks for the follow. I believe uh, Grassy Glide is base 70, for, uh, base 70 power, and Woodhammer is base 110. Okay. And it, it basically gains all the same benefits from uh, Grassy Terrain that Rillaboom sets himself uh, that Grassy Glide does. The only difference is it doesn't gain the plus one priority. Okay. Well, I, just, I just assume we're going to play with this first team until we lose or until we're like halfway through the stream. It, what, whatever you're up to, man. That was a lot of experience on the, on the ladder there. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Plus, because we're a big deal. We're on an undefeated streak now, Carter. <laughs> Which, that actually does make a difference when it comes to laddering. Okay. Okay. Um, so this one's weird. Because this is like another weather mirror, which we ran into three times now, and weather is not that popular right now. Okay. So, <laughs> so Hippowdon um, also has a stand string ability that Tyranitar does. So we probably want to do something similar that we did in game one. With Where we start the Politoed out and then swap it in? Yeah. So we right. have Politoed in the back and then be able to switch it in depending on okay, what they so, do. Okay, so duck up front, and then who do we want to pair duck with? Um, Probably Rillaboom. Just because they could set Trick Room with their Dust Claps, and Rillaboom has Taunt, which would stop that. So okay. if we have Rillaboom up front, and they don't have Weather, then we can just Taunt the Dust Claps and then Dynamax the Golduck and set its own range with Max Geyser. Okay. And, and then, then probably Scizor. Um, Zapdos doesn't line up particularly well against the double ground types that they have. Okay. And it doesn't really do anything against the rest of their team either outside of like the toga kiss but that's fine hey nick thanks for the biddies and yeah this will all go up on youtube in one full segment and then i'll probably clip uh a few different battles and get like a 10 minute highlight or so depending on how long they are once we once we get some good ones I'm, i mean like you said jeff we're two and oh like the the entire segment has to be one giant string <laughs> What does our opponent do here? Okay, so this is really annoying because Togekiss has follow me, which is going to make it where whatever we attack with is going to go into the Togekiss, and the Hatterene is going to use Trick Room, which is going to uh, reverse the the way that speeds work. So the slowest Pokemon is going to go first. Notably, Hatterene is extremely slow, so it's going to go first once Trick Room gets up. Okay. So the only way we have to deal with that is kind of at this point just kind of pray that we can take out the Togekiss and take out the Hatterene. Okay, am I, I am I Dynamaxing here or no? Uh, yes. And I think it is appropriate to go probably just the Max Hailstorm into the Togekiss. And, and then, then try and glide into the other one? Yes, that'll that'll be fine. Um, and we're hoping we're hoping to kill the Togekiss with our ice attack here, then, right? Well, the problem is, is Grassy Glide is plus one priority, so it's gonna move before our Golduck does. Oh, so should I use the hammer then? Yeah, probably. It just depends on. It was probably correct to use the the wood hammer there, um, just because like they're Could... they're they're. One, they uh, they didn't use follow me, huh? So that went a little differently than I anticipated. Okay, so now if we expect them to switch the speeds, uh, they're gonna go twice in a row now, basically. Essentially, yes. Okay. That burn is super unfortunate. But I don't think it actually matters here. So yeah, um, since we have hail now, everything takes residual damage at the end of turn. Yep. And you notice that Hatterene and then Togekiss took the damage. So this, this actually explains to you uh, what order the Pokemon are going to attack in the next turn. Okay, cool. So now we know, yeah. So that confirms what we thought. 
it confirms that Golduck is faster than Rillaboom, uh, which in this case is kind of a problem. Uh, but this is actually fine because we can just... I kind of like just going for another Max Hailstorm into the Togekiss and then... Um, probably just a Grassy Glide into the... Real, uh, into the uh, yeah, that'll, the that'll kill it, hand. right? Yeah. yeah, pending pending that they don't Dynamax it, it should take it out here. Even even if, since we are Burn. Um, so Burn is a really important uh, status condition in the current format. Because a lot of the Pokemon are physical, and whenever you're burnt, your physical damage is halved to anything that you would do. Okay. So that burn on Tri Attack was super unfortunate because it meant that our Rillaboom's damage output is going to be halved for the rest of the game. Oh, yeah, because all his attacks are physical. Yeah. All his attacks are physical. Hey, Scroll, thank you for the brand new turn. So I really appreciate that. Welcome to Glendia. Hope you're having a wonderful evening wherever you're at. So Thanks. not not quite the turns I anticipated, but I'll take it nonetheless. So they haven't used their Dynamax yet, notably, and we've got one turn left on ours, so they're gonna put out two mons here and they're almost assuredly Dynamaxing one of them. Mm -hmm. Probably going to see I could see uh Hippowdon and Agron here as their last. So we see the Garchomp. That's kind of annoying. Okay, so we're probably going to see the Dynamax from the Garchomp. Uh, Dynamax is basically a way to supersize a Pokemon, and you can supersize one Pokemon per battle, and it says supersize for three turns. Oh. The Room Service Garchomp. So Room Service is an, abil is a, uh, is an item that, when Trick Room is up, will lower your speed by one to make you slower. So I want to hit Gar Garchomp going here. To the Garchomp here, yeah. Yep. Okay. And then probably a Wood Hammer into the Garchomp as well. But I have right, a feeling just, just try just try and push it off. It. Okay. Yeah. I have, I have a feeling Rillaboom's going down this turn because they're going to attack into it. We do see the Dynamax presumably from Garchomp. I'd, I'd be very surprised if this is a big hippo. And then with us still having two Mons remaining, um, like we shouldn't be able to last last this Dynamax out, I imagine. Hopefully. Notably, we have Politoed in the back, which is... That's a weird play, too. I am really confused by what our opponent is doing So here. you need to remember at the bottom of the ladder, Carter. So wherever, <laughs> wherever you're at on the ladder, <laughs> wherever you're at on the ladder, you can only be one level above people, Carter. <laughs> okay, so... They have Max Ooze, which raises their special attack, which is really weird because Garchomp is a physical Pokemon. It oh, doesn't matter, Garchomp is gone. Nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. Ice, Garchomp. ice, baby. I'm just saying, man, Golduck is too good. <laughs> uh, so Carl was helping me build this, and he's, he's a big fan of uh, rain teams and I, I have been too ever since they added in Politoed in the Isle of Armor uh, because before that your only rain setter was Pelipper who's notably pretty bad um, so we can we can go into Politoed here or Scizor uh, it's up to you it doesn't Scizor really hasn't gotten to play yet we gotta we gotta we gotta space out the mons man we gotta gotta give everybody some love this I love all my Pokemon equally forever. just like my children this shiny took me forever to get. I want you to know that. <laughs> oh, it's then, green! I didn't realize it was a green one. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> so here, uh, we can just go for a Scald, and then uh, Rillaboom... I mean, uh, I, I guess Scizor can just Bullet Punch? Yeah, Bullet Punch is probably the best move here. Uh, so Bullet Punch, much like Grassy Glide, is a plus one priority. Notably, Scizor has the ability Technician, which raises all of its attacks that have less than 60 base attack to a 1.5 times bonus on that. So Bullet Punch goes from a base 40 move with priority to 60 with uh, Technician, and then you add in the same type of attack bonus, meaning it's a base 90 attack with choice band coming off a 300 uh attack stat so it just it does a ton of damage essentially that's sweet
the re the rental system in this game is really cool for people that are just joining us too basically i didn't do anything to set up these mons shout out to to carter across the way and he they, they just he just sent me a code he sent me codes for a few different teams i just typed the code in and it bloated the team up with the moves and their items and they're just good to go and we get to jump right on and play here which is really sweet yeah it's, it's fantastic um i I've, I've talked about it on the podcast a couple different times but this generation they have added so many quality of life changes to make it where um pokemon is just so much more accessible <laughs> and, and just like that man we're already in tier four we've hit the pokeball tier tier floor we we only can go up from here and it's all i mean we're undefeated carter we're just gonna keep we're <laughs> gonna keep cut hot knife through butter cold duck through butter cold ducks probably don't cut butter um probably not <laughs> All right, what's going on? I, I'm also a little bit behind because I don't know. I'm not. I'm kind of shaky on what mons are what past second generation. So, okay, so you're missing out on literally everything on our opponent's team. Gotcha. The third one down, some kind of Zapdos, right? Though. Uh, so in Gen Seven, they introduced uh, regional variants, and this yep. is the Gen Eight variant of Zapdos. So instead of being electric, it is fighting. So it's fighting and weird instead of. Yeah, it's real weird, but it's super cool. Um, I anticipate probably Zapdos and Dragapult, which is the dragon-looking ghost thing up top there. Okay. Uh, I, I anticipate that being their lead. So we probably just want to go Golduck Politoed so we can outspeed the Dragapult. Sweet. And then we'll max the Golduck and ice it? Yep. Yeah, look at that. Which We're understanding be, some of it. It's going to be kind of weird because that's going to get rid of our, uh, our weather. But we can hopefully one shot the the Dragapult here. Okay, then and then in the back, we probably just want probably like Scizor and Rillaboom. This Rillaboom Bloom is Bloom is growing on me. I didn't have any emotional attachment to it when we started this evening, but I'm growing <laughs> one. Yeah, it's it's very good. That shiny also took me forever. That was about. 2800 eggs or something i had for that one are shinies just cosmetic or is there a stat no, purely cosmetic okay yeah, just just making sure i understand yeah. the details you have to you, you can't pay with your wallet to make your stuff look better in this game so i have to spend the time and effort to do no that. i'm pretty sure i could hire someone to farm me shinies okay but you, you <laughs> actually can and i i hate the fact that you can basically gen pokemon this Thanks shiny Politoed is baller. He looks way cooler than the ugly green one. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous. Okay. All right. All right. So we're we're dying. Do they start how we thought we were there? Short. They didn't lead on a dragon. Not even slightly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but is there a fighting? We do we want to di Dynamax and Psychic? We want to Dynamax the Golduck here, and probably go for a Mind Storm into the Urshifu. Sweet. And then probably just go for an Icy Wind. Um, that's going to lower the speed of the wall rain okay. and is going to break the focus sash on the Urshifu if there is one. Okay. I, I really love, like, like I mentioned, I'm not super familiar with, um, which Pokemon are which from these newer, re these newer regions, but the fact that, like, it tells me which moves are super effective really lets me mm -hmm. feel it out a little bit. It makes it intuitive even without me having to, like, sit here and look up everything if I didn't have you. So, uh, Urshifu, the... The fighting Pokemon on the opponent's side there uh, was introduced in the Isle of Armor, the first DLC for Pokemon, um, which has two different variants. There's a fighting and dark and a fighting and water variant. Uh, notably, this is the water variant because if it was psychic, uh, if it was um, dark, our psychic wouldn't be effective at all. Okay. So it's And they switched to really a dragon, so our ice attack's going to be super effective against that one at least now, right? Correct. Um, that's gonna do a lot of damage. That's fine. Politoed is super bulky and eats it up. And the Toad's primarily there to give us what rain to start for Golduck, right? He is pure support. His his primary goal is to make sure that Golduck does its thing really well. Okay, so that lowers the speed of both of their Pokemon, which is great because uh, Naganadel, the the dragon there on side, is also exceptionally fast. So lowering its speed there is very good. So I probably want to hailstorm the dragon and then hope Toad now goes in front of the other one. 
Toad is really slow, so it's probably not going to go first. Do I want to protect with um, the Toad, then? You can't protect in front of Urshifu. Uh, the it's last attack, it's a Its ability makes it where it can attack through, uh, through protect. So it's probably correct to actually withdraw the, the Politoed here. Oh, you think so? Okay. Who are we, who are we throwing out? Scissor? Uh, Scissor. Yeah, sure. You talked me into it. <laughs> uh, is Scissor... I, uh, the newer typings to, like, Fairy Steel are ones I don't know offhand. How does Steel line up into fighting? Uh, steel into fighting... Steel is weak to fighting, but it's... I believe it's neutral back? Someone correct me on that if I'm wrong. Uh, but notably, Bug resists fighting, so if they do go for a close combat here, you're gonna take it just fine. Okay. Hopefully. Moments, moments before disaster. Oh, they just go into cold up. That's actually even better for us. That's really good for us, right? Yeah. Because that means we have a super healthy Scizor ready to do its thing. And Urshifu nice. goes down to hell here. That's really, that's really good. Yeah. I wasn't sure if we were going to pick up the double KO there, but I'm really glad that we were able to. Oh, I mean, we can't stop our undefeated streak, Carter. Sorry, Jeff. I, I'm still trying to figure all this out myself. So the, the Zapdos <laughs> is still a bird, though, right? So it's a fighting bird, so I I still still be effective into it. I guess uh, uh, this is technically effective into it, too, right? Yeah, I would actually go for the Mindstorm into it. Okay. And I would actually switch Scizor back out into Politoed, um, so we can set the rain again. Because oh, your max health form okay. changed. I want to make sure we can outspeed the Zapdos, basically. Perfect. Okay, so that makes sense. When we swap the Toad back in, it gives us the environment back, which makes the duck guaranteed fast. Okay. Um, the only way they are going to be faster than us... They, they shouldn't be. There shouldn't be any way. If they're Choice Scarf, we should still be faster. Yeah, cool. So hopefully this takes it out. Cool. Oh, yeah. We can eat that no, Zapdos for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Give it that Psychic Char. Yeah, this Polito just eats itself, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> Look at oh. that thick boy! Look at him! And our berry makes it rare. We just heal that entire Hydro Pump and then some back. Notably, our opponent is not Dynamaxed here, which is kind of a problem. But it's not that big of a problem. Um, we're like just at this like point, Yeah, we're, we're up 4 to 1, so it doesn't really matter what we do here. And probably just go for a Helping Hand. What, is, what does that do? Uh, the user... Uh, that makes it where your, your Golduck's attack is going to do, I believe it's 1.5 times damage. Someone in chat correct me if I'm wrong on that. Evening, Volsterin. And, and thanks for the follow there, Zeshman. For folks who are new to the channel, I'm brand new to Pokemon VCG, so Carter's kind of guiding us through. Normally I read chat more when I'm on my own, but we're trying to have a little bit of a back and forth here tonight. Appreciate everybody dropping in. Yep, it is, it is a 50% increase. Cool. Yay, Polytoon! <laughs> Good job. <laughs> and Gloss, thanks for the follow. All right, Tweet, that was that still pretty... That did not do a lot. <laughs> Listen, it's fine. It's fine. This thing is using attacks that aren't super effective anyways. Yeah, well, close enough. Um, so we can go into Scizor here, which has Brick Break, which is going to be super effective. Okay. We, can, we can also go into uh, to Rillaboom because Rillaboom has Grassy Glide, and we have Woodhammer. Yeah, let's let's go into Rillaboom here. Let's monkey around. So this is going to be really bad if for some reason the Wall Rain is faster than us, but it shouldn't be. Would you, or would you say you're going to go ape shit if they're faster than us? <laughs> I wasn't, but since you said it, yes. <laughs> So, yeah, All right, we'll, so we'll should we have the Toad helping hand the the Rillaboom then? Yeah. Okay. That was that was the plan. Probably just wood hammer. You want to want a hammer? Okay. I want to make sure we do a ton of damage here. So okay. yeah. And then helping hand. We could protect, but I think if they're if they're going to attack, 
they're gonna go into the real boom to try to take it out this time. Okay, and I assume helping hand's one of those moves that has a higher priority, so it goes it always goes first, usually. It has a plus five priority. It is the I, I believe it's the move with the highest priority in the game. It is it is hammer time. <laughs> Polytoad's just over here clapping, man. <laughs> Listen, if anybody was going to give me the clap, Carter, I'd want it to be Polytoad, okay? <laughs> I, I'm not touching that one with a 40-foot pole, man. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't care about their team. <laughs> yeah, they won. It doesn't matter. Yeah, come on. We're undefeated. Let's go. I wonder I wonder if this is enough to pull us into the next tier. I'm assuming it is. Like, we're man. like, what? I at this point Man, fuck, I didn't realize how good this shiny Politoed looks. I'm gonna need a shiny Politoed in Pokemon Go now. <laughs> it looks way better. Like, the uh, like I love Politoed, but he is an ugly green by default. He is very ugly. You you are not wrong by that. Okay, so chat, for people that are wondering about the swearing, so this is a Pokemon video, so I need to make sure to swear a couple of times so I can tag it on YouTube appropriately is not for children. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, Jeff. I have no idea what our opponent's doing here. Yeah, man, we're at the bottom of the ladder. You know what? Do they have any? Do they have any weather Pokemon? No. So All right, fine. duck and toad to Probably start. Let's do it. Lock it in. <laughs> Doesn't matter what they're doing if we're gonna kill them first. You see, you have figured out Pokemon already. <laughs> I'm gonna put in the scissor and, and and the and the ape man because I am I am into them. That sounds perfect. Yeah, probably gonna see a trick room from either the Dusk Noir or the Gardevoir. But, like, they don't have anything extremely slow to take abuse, to, like, abuse trick room, so. This should be fine. Yeah, the, the, re the Rain Plus Priority Pokemon seems really sweet. Okay, so that's a Shiny Corviknight. Uh, the bird there on our opponent's side. That's a flying... Is it flying steel? It is absolutely awful looking is what it is. But yes, you <laughs> are correct. Do we want to Dynamax and then Ice into that then? Um, You could probably just Geyser. Uh, just go for the water because it's going to be boosted by rain and you get the same type of attack bonus and you don't change your weather. Perfect. All right, because changing the weather is relevant so we want to keep Duck going quick. Zoom, zoom. Correct. Okay. And then and probably... Icy wind? Probably just an icy wind because, for whatever reason, milk tank is stupid fast. It it bothers me how fast milk tank is. Not as much as the fact that someone had to had to code in jizz, jiggle physics for its udders. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, Jeff. I played approximately two games with this team before. After I sent it to you, the worst part is I didn't test it before I played it. Uh, before I sent it to you at all, so I'm really glad that it's actually doing something good because I there is a very good chance that this is just a dumpster fire. Okay, so no, so no joke. When I was traveling to play a lot of competitive Magic, that game has you know there's a lot of variance in Magic, and. When, it, when we would hit a streak and feel like I liked a deck for a portion, I would intentionally stop playing games with it, because I was like, you know what? If I play more games with this, it's going to fucking suck, and I'm going to hate it. So we're just going <laughs> to call that good, sleeve it up, and register it. So, um, this was, I believe it was, like, regionals in, like, 2013. Uh, me and one of my buddies who uh, I did a lot of testing with. This is back when you were playing a ton of Kiki Cord, right? Yep. And I'm like, that deck is sweet. I want to play it. And so, like, I proxied it up and practiced it. And, like, I, you know, I love the deck, even though my win rate with it was awful. And I, my buddy sits me down and goes, dude, you're not Jeff Hoagland. Quit playing this deck. It's bad. <laughs> this is uh, this is a dragon, right? So we get to ice that this now? That is, a dragon. So you can, you can delete that dragon. It is fine. I would like to shift delete the dragon. All right, and then do we just like ice again just in case it's got a focus band? Yeah, that's fine. Um, plus, like, it's also going to make milk tank slower again because you're going to get rid of your rain this turn. What are they dynamaxing? I would say, are they going to dynamax the dragon we're about to delete? Maybe they don't expect an ice attack. That, sure, man. Oh, no, they're... they're, oh, they're, they're, they're that is look, a... look at these jiggle physics. 
These jiggle physics are utterly ridiculous. It was almost as bad as that joke. Listen, I can. I have three children. <laughs> you have. You have earned. I have. Dad jokes, that is. I have earned. Earned my way into that. Okay. Okay, and the fact that we've like icy wind this cow now twice should hopefully mean that our Dynamax will go before theirs next turn still. Yeah, even even though we don't have rain, we should still be faster. Yeah, the the fact that Politoed is faster than it now guarantees Meat. that Goldrack okay, cool. be faster. Oh no! Oh no! My port. Okay, my no, duck is fine. It's fine. <laughs> Listen, I was getting for a minute. my duck and I. We have a connection card, and I was fearing for its life. <laughs> <laughs> How can Pokemon be for children oriented with that kind of jiggling? <laughs> you know, I give Twitch chat a hard time, but sometimes they actually do have some good jokes there. That shiny gold duck was much the shiny shy duck, says the shiny shy duck. You're not you're not wrong. All right, so are we supposed to hit their Dynamax with our Dynamax, or are we supposed to KO the Nitto Queen with a super effective attack? I think setting back up a Max Geyser is probably correct. Max Geyser um, on who? On the on, to KO the Queen? Probably, or? probably the Queen. Okay, because we can we have all of our Mons still. We can easily outlast yeah, this tank, yeah. right? So then we probably want to go for a Scald into the Milk Tank. Um, it, it's going to be decent damage, but the real reason is there's a chance for it to burn, which if we get the burn chance, there Wait, might my be- Wait, my water attack has a chance to burn? It's real weird, I know. Um, but there's a chance if we get the burn that Golduck lives. I haven't done the math, but maybe? Okay, oh, and then Golduck made it rain again, so that helps the Scald, right? Correct. Come on, burn. Burn. No burn. Okay. So they're going for a max quake here, which is one of the better max moves in the game. Um, max quake, max steel spike, and max airstream are probably the three best because they boost your uh, steel spike boosts your defense, quake boosts your special defense, and uh, airstream, which is the flying one, boosts your speed. Okay. So those are absurdly good. And probably just go for a double scald here. Yep, just try and light him up. Yeah, like, hopefully we can get a burn. Worst case scenario, we get really good chip damage and we lose them all. And that's their second turn with Dynamax, so they're going to shrink after this turn? Yeah, this should be third turn, meaning they're over this turn. No burn. That is really unlucky. Jeff, have you considered being luckier? It's a good line. Wow, and they're splitting up here too, so they didn't kill either of our mons? That's really bizarre. Bottom of Maybe. the ladder, Carter. Bottom of the ladder. To be fair, um, we did show them the life orb from Golduck, so there was a decent chance that we could be KO'd by the life orb, uh, depending on what our HP stat was at, but luckily we're a professional and we didn't lose our Golduck, so we can just go for the double stall here again. My blue boy's out here in front. Get him. Get him. Mm, get that milk nice and warm. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, Jeff, there's... there's. You're a math man, so you'll appreciate the damage calculator. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So, the way attacks work in Pokemon is every attack has a, uh, a chance to do anywhere from... 0.85 to one times effective damage. Uh, so there's 16 ranges then that every attack has a chance to roll. Okay. So based on whatever coordinating attack stat you're using versus whatever defense stat they're using, times the multiplier of range dictates how much damage you do. So there's some rolls where you have like a, you know, a Four and sixteen chance of picking up a KO, or a nine and sixteen chance. And it's just those are super. It's really upsetting when you miss those rolls, and that's probably why our Golduck lived that turn. 
um, was because they missed the roll to deal that extra two damage when we were Dynamaxed. But then when we weren't, we were able to live. Huh. So they have their own monkey. Are we concerned about their monkey? We could... Um, well, we, we don't really have anybody that's very good against grass, do we? Well, I is guess ice, ice, is, ice is good in the grass, right? Oh, we have flying, too. Yeah, we have we have flying on Zapdos, and we have fire on Zapdos. Because, for some reason... For some... <laughs> Are we um, leading with the water gang? They don't have weather, so... <laughs> I think that's always the play, right? If they don't, we just leave with the water gang? I'm not going to tell you no. And, and then, then probably... Scissor Zapdos or Rillaboom Zapdos? I really like Zapdos and... It could be correct to bring Persian, to be 100% what, what honest. Is, what does Persian do? Uh, so Persian has Fake Tears, which has their special defense, which notably every Pokemon that we have is a special attacker. Um, it has Fake Out, it has Foul Play, which uses their attack stat to hit, and it has Taunt, I think is the last move. I don't know, man. Why are you asking me these questions? The numbers on the bottom are just the arbitrary numbers we've picked, right? For our, our character. Like, it says 22 next to me. I think that was the number I picked for yeah, my it's, trainer. Okay. It's just your arbitrary number. Oh, it has Quash. Quash is its last move, which, uh, because Persian is extremely fast, Quash will go first, which makes whatever it, it quashes go last. Okay. So, in the event that Golduck doesn't have rain, you can quash something and make it go super slow, and then we can take out uh, take out their Pokemon before you get hit. So, this doesn't look like it, but the thing with Charizard's head on its arms is a dragon. Okay. So, uh, Hailstorm looks really good here because it hits both of them super effectively. And we probably want to go into Rillaboom because otherwise we're going to take a really big uh, grassy glide. Okay, so I want to Dynamax and then use my Ice. Yeah. And we probably want to stay in and go for an Icy Wind. Which again is just going to do some decent chip damage and get our speed control, which is the important part. If they Dynamax Rillaboom here, we're in a really bad position. I will I will tell you that one. Well, is, will Grassy Glide beat our speed on the duck? Because of the priority way it goes? Yes. Okay. So even though Goldbuck is insanely fast, uh, priority, priority has priority, to put it simply, over okay. anything else that we do. Okay, so they fake out the Politoed. That does a lot of damage. Okay, they're life orb, that's why. So Rillaboom goes away here, that's fine. But Politoed doesn't get to have its attack go off. They shouldn't they shouldn't have monkeyed around with the with the with the fake out. They should not have monkeyed around. You you are correct, Jeff. <laughs> that's true. Grassy Glide would not be Glide if they were if they Dynamaxed it. Correct. So uh Reggie Draco here has uh, this is one of the new uh, Reggie forms. Uh, the original Reggies were from Gen 3. There's Reg Ice, Reg Rock, and Reg Steel, which are, I bet you can't guess, Ice, Rock, and Steel type. Okay. Uh, so then in this generation, they added Reggie Eliki, which is Electric, and Reggie Draco, which is Dragon. Um, and all the Reggies have a stat that has 200 as its base. Uh, as its base stat, and Eliki is speed, which makes it the fastest Pokemon currently in the game. Uh, and Draco has an HP of 200, which makes it HP stat like 350 or something absolutely ridiculous at level 50. It's just absolutely insane. They really chunked into our duck there on that last attack. Yeah, so its attack there, uh, it used Dragon Energy, which does damage to both of our Pokemon based on uh, their remaining HP. It's a base 150 dragon move that also gets boosted by its ability, so it just does absolutely insane damage. Um, probably go for a Hailstorm on the dragon. The Draco. And then I kind of like protecting Politoed this turn. 
Do, if they drag energy first, is that going to take the duck down? Oh, they're Dynamaxing. Okay. Uh, that's going to be the Spectreer. Almost 100% of the time, that's going to be Spectreer. Okay. It is. Okay. So, in the event that uh, the Draco is faster than Gold Buck, we're going to lose our Gold Buck. And that's going to be sad. Could I have had Toad protect the Golduck? No. That's only out of uh, self. Is the duck faster? Did we see that? I wasn't paying attention to hail damage. Nope, it's faster. That's really sad. Sorry, Golduck. I tried. My but... duck! <laughs> they massacred the boy! Poor duck! You deserve to be done like that, chat. Oh no, Toad was protecting himself! So Dynamax moves go through Protect, but you only take 25% of the damage compared to all of it. Well, 25% um, was a lot, Carter. It, well, look, man, it's it's really... Yeah, it's really good. Um, Spectre is insanely fast, and it has an insanely high special attack. The problem is, is it's extremely frail, so if you can actually get an attack off on it, it usually dies. The problem is... Is I think Spectre outspeeds Persian. So we can bring in Persian here though. And we can go for a fake out into the Draco. Because fake out does not work on the big one. Correct. And oh hmm. Do we just Icy Wind? Probably. It's pre to Toad's probably dead, right? If they attack Toad, he is 100% dead. Oh, that, that last attack that went into into Toad was also a crit, which okay. is notable, but, I mean, it still did a lot of damage. So Max Strike is going to lower our speed. Which is fine, because we're also going to get an Icy Wind off, which is going to lower their speed. Okay. The problem is, is I think Spectreer is still faster than Persian. Which is going to be really important to pay attention to hail damage this turn. So... Alright, so yeah, so, so that's going to go first... Then that, then Persian, then, then our Toad, so... That's really awkward. That, so that's almost 100% uh, Choice Scarf Draco, which is really interesting. I haven't seen that before, but it makes a ton of sense here. They just want to go turbo fast and fire off as many dragon energies as they can. Okay, and their big idiot's got one more turn being big now? Correct. So here... We can go for a foul play into the Spectreer and protect Toad. Yeah, I think that sounds good. This is really awkward because I have a feeling whatever they attack, we're gonna lose. Especially since since the uh, the Draco is so fast. And they they still have a fourth mon, right? We've only killed one so far, I believe. I believe so. Oh, I haven't seen this animation. This is... This is sweet. Alright, well, sorry, Persian. Look, uh, Jeff, just know that if we lose this game, it's all Persian's fault. Because I know, I didn't I fault. didn't want to sub Persian in. But I, I trusted you, Carter. And I put the damn cat in. I, all I'm going to say is we were undefeated on the ladder up until this point, and we hadn't played Persian up until this point. <laughs> There's probably a reason. <laughs> All right, so the horse is psychic, you said, so the scissor will be super effective into it? It's ghost. It's ghost. Okay. Oh, I don't have scissor. I have Zapdos. Right. We had a cat instead of my scissor. I'm never going to hear the end of this, am I? <laughs> Notably, it's also not raining, so Zapdos is kind of kind of not great here. Yeah, because Thunder's not guaranteed to hit if it's not raining, right? Thunder and Hurricane are both, uh, I believe, 70% to hit. So it's a good thing I'm lucky, Carter. 
sure, Jeff. I believe that. I've I've seen you play card games. I know how this works. Wait, are we faster than the Draco? We are paralyzed! Look at that. You eat that almond because you're paralyzed now. Well, now they're not. Their Lumberry cured their paralysis. Oh, that's sad. The good thing is, Polytoad is really good at taking crits. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> this is going to do a lot. Now we're fine. Zapdos is insane. Yeah, I think the I think we're done though, right? Just like they've got they've got three and we've got just Zappy. And yeah. Uh, I, I see no way we can really win this game. Where do I call the mercy roll? I need my bird to get out of this alive. Uh, you you actually can. Um, when it comes back to your where you can gain control, you can run. Alright. Just for future record, Persian gets to stay at home the rest of the day. <laughs> Look at that smug look on her face. They know, they know we put the cat in. <laughs> they know what we did. <laughs> they know, they know. I'm just throwing this out here. I'm really, got, uh, really glad that some of my, some of my guys from the, the Pokemon Discords are here to explain stuff in chat so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, shout out, shout out to all the regular Hooklandians hanging out here tonight. Also, shout-outs to, uh, to the other folks hanging out, checking out some VCG from Carter's People. VGC, VGC. I keep saying VCG. It's VGC. VGC. That, yes. GC. It's a really weird acronym. I will give it that. But, I mean, it makes perfect sense. So. All right. What do we got here? Well, I see no way they can change weather. Sorry, duck's always number one, but duck is <laughs> the duck is the duck comes first. All right, and they've got a real boom, and they've got a real boom here, so I want the Zapdos because it does fire and air. Okay, great. And then probably Scizor as our last, um, just because we have Bullet Punch, which can hit both the Togekiss and the Sylveon super effectively, and can just outspeed everything else and do a ton of damage to them. So I like locking in Scizor here. I'm I'm not confident Scizor's the right pick, but I am confident Persian's the wrong pick. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, that was like five minutes ago. Can you let it go already? <laughs> their avatars all flared up. Look at that. Got a ninja move in their pants stance pose there. Jeff, you need to work on your trainer card. It's really lacking. <laughs> Listen, I beat the Elite Four just fine with that trainer card. Is there an Elite Four in this game? I forget. No, there's the Champions Cup or whatever it is, which is basically an Elite Four, but not really. Oh, right. There was a bracket, right? Yes. My five-year-old, every time he remembers this game exists, complains he can't beat Leon. <laughs> Alright, so the Togekiss you said as the redirect move, so we're leading on Dynamax like we usually do. Yep. Probably and then... Hailstorm. Okay. I like going for Hailstorm here just to try to clear out. Actually... Then... Do you want a helping yeah, hand? Probably. probably, yeah. I like helping hand here. Just to guarantee it, basically? I know the last one lived the Hailstorm, but helping hand hopefully is going to be enough to take it out here. If they go for a Dynamax Togekiss, we could be in kind of rough shape. Um, nah, it's fine. Toad's going to give our duck the clap, and we're going to kill him. <laughs> so, uh, Togekiss was super popular up until Series 7 started, and then it completely fell out of favor and doesn't see basically any play whatsoever anymore. Well, um, my anecdotal evidence in six matches so far tonight is that 50% of people play Togekiss. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because their Togekisses are awful and they just get one shot by Golduck. I know. The duck. People, people need to take note that Golduck is the new meta. The duck is my jam.
So Hyper Voice coming off of Sylveon here. Uh, Sylveon has the ability Pixelate, uh, which changes all normal type moves to Fairy type, meaning they also get the same type attack bonus from Sylveon. Um, it also uses a Throat Spray there, which whenever you use a uh, sound-based move, will trigger your Throat Spray to raise your uh, special attack by one. So okay. now the next turn, Sylveon's gonna do a little more damage, but I think Rillaboom is a bigger problem for us. Okay, so do I want to swap to Zapdos on the Politoed and Ice with the Duck? We could... It might just be correct to uh, just Hailstorm into the Rillaboom and switch into uh, switch into Zapdos. Because pending that something terrible happens to Golduck this turn, we have Zapdos already on the field to be able to deal with it. Yep. And it also technically gives us the option to sub back into Toad next turn to guarantee that we go first sans the glidey move. Correct. Show me fake out. That'd be really good. Grassy glide into my Zapdos. That's adorable. Bye, Rillaboom. Shouldn't have monkeyed around. Should have Dynamaxed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Jeff. We have Rude. Uh oh. That should be that should be inhale damage. That should go down here. Oh no! Oh no! Carter! That's on you! Why would oh. you wish this upon me? I don't know what to do now, Jeff. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So here's the play. We're gonna protect Golduck tonight. We need to protect Golduck. And then... Well, Zapdos took damage first, so Zapdos is going to go first, right? Yes. But um, if they use Grassy Glide into Golduck, it's going to go first. Mm. Max Guard? Yes. And then we can just go for... Probably just a Heat Wave is the most accurate move of those. And it hits. Be super effective. And it's going to hit both of them? Yeah. Perfect. Which... It's not going to do a lot to the Sylveon, but it should do enough that it's considerable. Grassy Glide into the Gold Duck. Hey, Phoenix Lance, thank you for the very generous tier two, and I appreciate the three years. Yeah, this has been fun. Shout out, shout out to Carter again for hooking us up and helping us out. Jeff, you were kind of unlucky and you missed the Sylveon. I missed the Sylveon, that's rude. On a positive note, we still have a duck. Okay, and now we can sub back in the Toad, so Duck goes first next turn? Yep, sounds great to me. And they shouldn't have anything in the back that Duck is scared of at this point. But they still have a Dynamax out, and worth noting we're down oh, to yeah. three months. Hmm. So, you had mentioned when we were starting that there's, like, considered some aggro lineups, some control lineups, even uh, mid-range lineups, and, like... Uh, how the archetypes are kind of uh, established in this game, does that dictate how likely you are to use your Dynamax ability? Like, how early? Like, I assume, like, what we're doing is an aggro build because we're Dynamaxing right away. Yeah. That's, there's no, like, official way to tag teams uh, because there's a lot of variance even, even between, like, the same six Pokemon can have different EV spreads and different attacks and making them uh, attack differently. But uh, the big thing is, like, based on, generally speaking, on what six Pokemon you bring will dictate how aggressive of a team you want to be. Um, so typically speaking, like your weather teams are super aggressive and are all going to try to Dynamax as soon as possible. Um, whereas the, uh, the Entei and Moltres team that I sent you, which we might get to depending on how Golduck does, um, it is definitely a more mid-range team because you want to try to stall out your opponent's Dynamax as much as possible before you bring in your Haymaker threat of Moltres and take over the game that way. So it really just dictates, it's all dictated on uh, like how you play and how your opponent plays based on the lead as to what actually goes on. So like, had they led Rillaboom here, uh, there could have been a chance that we don't Dynamax the Golduck immediately, and instead we want to switch into um, Zapdos. Into Zapdos, and then Dynamax Zapdos instead. 
So notably, Steel is super effective against Fairy. So this Sylveon should just be deleted by this Bullet Punch. Well, they're gonna, they haven't Dynamax yet, so I assume that that's coming this turn. Jeff, I, I said what I meant, especially if we helping hand. <laughs> you, you heard him, Toad. Scissor gets the clap. <laughs> I'm really interested in seeing how much damage this does. Evan, Evan in chat is 100% correct. I love to blow things up as aggressively as possible. Arena is definitely comparable to mobile games these days, which is saying something. That that really is. Yeah, I don't I don't understand wrong. the thing I really don't understand about the Pokemon game. Maybe you can understand that, Carter. But where are the microtransactions to level my Pokemon faster? Oh, Jeff, uh, those don't exist. I know that's hard to believe, but they don't exist. You pay with your time. Deleted. All right, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna say that the bullet punch deleting their Dynamax is gonna make up for the Persian. I'm gonna give that one to you. <laughs> to be fair, I wasn't sure if it was going to. But no, I don't stop it. I'm give, I'm counting you credit, man. Just cash it to the bank. Don't don't talk me out of it. I believed hard enough, so it happened. All right. I'm going to do one more with the duck, okay? The 10-ton ten hammer. We're going to do a second to you. I promise we're not going to play the duck all night, but the duck the duck has a special place in my heart now. And I'm this just saying, this, I'm okay if we want to play the duck all night. This duck, <laughs> this duck and this toad, we're going places. Ooh, they have a buzzwall. Okay, so buzzwall is not very good, but I like it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Hey, they have a Suicune. I know who that Pokemon is. You you are correct. I'm assuming you know uh, P2 as well. There's P2, and then uh, the one underneath it is a dragon type I know because I have that one in Pokemon Go, but I don't know what it's called. That is Latias? There's oh, Latias right. There's Latios and Latias, right? And I can't remember which is which. All right. The, the again, uh, starting question, are we opening on Duck? I see no reason not to lead Duck. All right. That was a trick question, Carter. There's never a reason to not lead <laughs> Duck. <laughs> Sometimes you don't lead the Toad if they're weather. You always lead the Duck. <laughs> and then I really like... I like Rillaboom here. Okay, yep. Uh, actually, I kind of lied. I don't think I like Rillaboom. So we'd rather actually, have Zapdos? I, I really like Zapdos. Okay. And I think I like Scizor more than I like Rillaboom. I'm glad you cut me off on the Rillaboom before I made my mucky around joke, so I appreciate I appreciate that. <laughs> we would have really let the audience out if I made the monkey around joke and they didn't play the, the Rillaboom. Wow, look how cool their trainer cards are. My cosmetics are so lacking. It's a good thing Carter farmed all these shinies for us, otherwise they'd have no street cred right now. Yeah, those... The, the Zapdos is the only one that is not originally mine. Um, I believe it was from the Hyper Voice uh, podcast. They did a giveaway a while back saying, hey, we have this Gen 3 shiny Zapdos, and due to a glitch, we can reproduce it as many times as we want, so anyone who wants one can come get one. So I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll take a free shiny Pokemon. All right, not? so am I, am I maxing the, the duck? Yes. And I think we're going to go for a Max Geyser into the P2. Um, just because I think they're going to try to set up a Trick Room, and I want to get rid of it as soon as possible. Okay. And then Icy Wind on here? Probably actually a Helping Hand. Okay, because um, right, we want to kill the Porygon. Yeah, I, I think the damage that we do with uh, with Helping Hand is more, more important than uh, getting the Speed Drop. Especially if they try to get a Trick Room up here then, because that just means their Pokemon is that much slower. They're gonna move uh, I will. More. I will say from a learning perspective, this Duck team seems great. Like, it's the equivalent of handing someone an aggro deck where you're just like, okay, I'm, I'm figuring out, like, like I kind of got the gist of, like, what my team is doing and what my team is doing doesn't 100% depend on what they're doing. Like, even if I don't really know what their mons are, I kind of get, okay, we do this sequence to attack. Yep. It, it's pretty simple once you understand the basics. I'm not going to lie, I really wasn't expecting that to one-shot, but I'm really glad it did. Well, I mean, 
I believe in the duck enough for both of us, Carter. So I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you to stop bringing down the room. Sorry, I'll I'll show myself out next time. I love you, Gold Duck. It's it's so sad to say. I love Psyduck Shiny. Golduck is so bad though. I'm gonna be honest. I can't really tell what's shiny. Like, what's the difference between this and normal Golduck? Is just the beak color. That's a good question. All right. So um, <laughs> they just put out a, they just put out a mushroom, right? So that's weak to ice. Yes. Um, it is correct to get rid of the Amoongus here because Amoongus has spore, which is has a hundred percent accurate. Do we uh, help a hand again? Accurate. Yeah, that's fine. Um, spore has a hundred percent accurate. Uh, grass move that puts you to sleep and I really don't want our duck to go to sleep right now. Now my duck's a fighter not a sleeper. I believed hard enough that time. I want you to know that. Critical I, I, hit. See? <sighs> that might have mattered. <laughs> the critical hit was because you believed, Carter. So the, the difference between the Golduck Shinies is it's a darker blue and its beak is instead of being like a whitish yellow is a red. So again, Wait, super, and Duck, super duck super took Hail first there, so even without the rain, unless their last mon is faster, Duck's gonna go first next turn then. Buzzwall is not fast, so I think we're in the clear here. Okay, so we're gonna geyser this is super effective here? Yeah, we can we can geyser the Nihilego. They're probably gonna Dynamax the Buzzwool, so I really want to get a uh, icy wind in. I want to get an icy wind off. Yeah, on slow it. it down so that way we can be faster than our next turn. Yeah, perfect. I'm actually curious how slow Buzzwool is. Is Toad gonna get to outspeed it? Uh, Buzzwool has a base 79 speed, which I believe is faster than Poly Toad. That is a buff bug. Some might even say it's small. That is a a mighty schnoz on that on that bug. It's almost as big as the muscles. <laughs> All right, yeah, duck. Um, three Dynamax attacks, three KOs. But we have four Pokemon, so you done good, duck. <laughs> the rest of the squad can take out the big bug. Please you done your part. Attack my gold duck. Oh, we are faster. Yeah, faster. buddy. I really wasn't expecting that, but okay. Go. That's not into my duck. Wow. No respect for the duck at all. So the the idea behind that is uh, Max Fortify, which is the bug move, lowers the special attack of both of our Pokemon. So okay. Gold Duck is gonna do less damage here. But we can just go for a double scald and hope we get a burn. Is that better than the super effective psychic? Probably. Maybe. Actually, probably not. Psychic would probably do more damage, but I really want to get a burn. Because we're not, we're not lucky event... enough for a burn, Carter. <laughs> Jeff, it's like a thirty percent chance that we missed three times earlier. Oh, so you're saying we're due? We're, we're due. Sorry, yeah. so what I'm saying is we're lucky enough that I only need one skull to burn. Exactly. And Gold Duck, once again, living on, like, next to nothing here. Poly Damn it, Polytoad. Yeah, you, you get those last four hit points off my duck. You got it. Good job, friend. All right, and then Zapdos has a fire attack, which will be effective against the bug, I assume. Uh, it's, it's also fighting. It's fighting and flying. So Hurricane is actually four times effective and it's stab and it can't miss. So Hurricane should probably get rid of this buzz wall and make it Would sad. you say the buzz wall is gonna get blown away? You could say that. Okay. They're also at plus one special defense. So there's a decent chance this doesn't. Should, no, I, should, I give, should I give Zapdos the clap then? Yeah, clap him. Yeah. Polly 2. 
Politoon. I'm really glad you've enjoyed this team. Because, again, like I said, I was not anticipating this team being good. No, I'm pretty sure you gave me an Aces team, Carter. Yeah, you're on, right, sell you're yourself right. up. You brewed this up, and it's stellar. It is done. It, we can we can reasonably mark uh, meets it, it succeeds expectations on this one. There you go. We got to delete the Persian, but the rest of it's fine. You know, Persian was actually the last Pokemon we added to the team too, so clearly it's incorrect. I mean, it's just so perfect as a five mon team. The Persian's we, clearly just we don't attraction. even need the six. Correct. You just don't even need the six because you always lead ducks. You only have two other spots to fill, anyways. So, fun fact, the, the two games that I played after I sent you this team, I lost both of them, and both of them I brought Persian. So That's, clearly, so Persian has a 0% win rate, is all, <laughs> is all I'm saying. All right, let's switch to, let's switch to the different team of Mons here, huh? Sure. Is that Entei team you said was a mid-range team, this one? Yeah, this one, this is the the one that I played in the, the Pokepod Cup last week, and... Uh, I went 5-0 with uh, my my top cut match. I'm actually playing tomorrow night, which unfortunately I'm not going to be able to stream because I'm going to be out of town. But we went 7-1 with Golduck. Can we just reflect on that for a second? No, Golduck went 7-0. Persian went 0-1. <laughs> okay, so the goal of this team is to stall out our opponent's Dynamax as much as possible between uh, setting up screens with Tapu Koko and getting off burns with Entei. In the late game, we either want to sweep with Moltres, Milotic, or Metagross, depending on what they have. And Kumfei is usually the supporting role uh, because Kumfei's ability makes it where we can trigger our weakness policy on, Meta on uh, Moltres, or we can just rapidly spam heals on the rest of our team. Okay. So I like going Tapu Koko Entei almost always as a lead. There's very few times I don't lead that. I feel then, like, from a learning perspective, having two two we almost always lead on, it makes things easier. It, it really does. Um, and then to follow that up, based on what they have, we need to watch out for Eliki. But past that, I really like Moltres Comfey. Um, They could be setting up Trick Room with the Chandelure to try to sweep us with Blastrier, but that's 100% fine because Entei is just going to burn the horse. So, uh, much like much like Rillaboom, uh, Tapu Koko has an ability that's going to set terrain here. It's going to set electric terrain, which makes it where Pokemon can't be asleep. And electric moves get a 30% boost. Someone someone quote me on that, if I'm incorrect. Um, but that's not the reason we play it. It's the reason we're, we're playing Tapu Koko over something like, uh, specifically, Reggie Eliki, which also has access to dual screens and electro web, is because it sets electric terrain so we can get the Electric Seed boost on our Entei to boost its defense. So Electric Surge is going to go off here, which is then going to trigger our Electric Seed and put us at uh, plus one defense on our Entei. So it's extremely bulky at this point. He's a thick, thick dog. He is very thick. Uh, so our opponent's going to try to set up a Trick Room with Chandelure. They're going to click Follow Me with Clefairy. So we probably just want to set up Reflect. Okay. And then go for a uh, probably just a sacred fire into the into the Clefairy. Notably, we don't want to go into Chandelure because it has flash fire, so it would absorb the fire attack and give it a special defense boost. That's also really bizarre. Low ranks, Carter. Low ranks. Look, man, at some point I expect people to make the right play though. This is gonna hurt. But Coco's just insane, so it's okay. It, we were fi we finally get the burn, Jeff. <laughs> I mean, we were due, Carter. Sacred Fire also is 50% to burn, so we were actually due. Um, so we can set up Light Screen and then let Coco die, and that's 100% fine. Like, Coco has done its job this game. And then we can go for a Snarl, actually which would lower the special attack of the Chandelure. So if they want to go for another, uh, they want to go for another Shadow Ball, it's going to do way less damage be uh, between Snarl giving them minus one and us having Light Screen. So in, in singles, uh, 
reflect and light screen reduce the damage by 50 percent whereas okay. here in doubles it reduces it by one third so it makes okay. it a 63 uh, 66 percent compared to the the normal 100 percent damage we would take okay. which is actually something i didn't realize until like this week Ente is gonna eat this up because he is he is a very bulky boy. Uh, Chandelure also is notable to carry um, to carry Focus Sash so it can actually live in attack. So getting that Snarl off also guarantees that we break a potential Sash on it. Okay. So Coco has done its job. So at this point we just spam Electroweb, which is uh, it's Electric type Icy Wind. It hits both of them and lowers their and speed. And slows level. them down. Okay. And then are we just on the Snarl to keep dumping their special attack for now? Yep, sounds good to me. Our, our game plan is to sit back and let them try to dictate the gameplay. So, we're going to try to slow this game down as much as possible. Uh, they might pick up an early KO, but that doesn't really matter when we can come back and sweep them in the late game. Uh, okay. there, were, there were several games in the tournament I played last week where I went down two Pokemon extremely early, and Moltres just came in and picked up four KOs. Nice. So, and I like. I think this is. Uh, this we're only one battle into this team, and I can already feel like the texture difference between like what this team is doing versus what our Agro Duck team was doing. Yep. So uh, they're gonna bring out Reggie Eliki, which, like I said, is the fastest Pokemon in the game right now, and does basically everything Coco does except faster. But as a result, it's way frailer. Okay. So we get the electro web off, which means Coco is probably going to be faster than it next turn. And we're going to get the snarl off, which is also going to do decent damage to it. But more importantly, it's going to give it minus one if it wants to go for either a thunder cage or a, an electro web of its own. Okay. So again, I'm just, I'm completely we're just content on, with We're this. just like on this attack plan for the rest of these mods. We're just like snarling yep. and webbing. Be like, you, you can deal with me however long as you want to. Makes Notably sense. what they are doing is they're stalling out our turns on our, our screens, but they're also not pressuring Coco to where it's going to get knocked out. Okay, so we can so, re-up the screens on the line, potentially. Potentially. Granted, it's going to be a while before we get to that point because uh, Coco is holding the light clay, which instead of being, uh, which its screens, instead of being up for five turns, are then up for eight. So Coco finally goes down, which is fine, because now they're going to switch out the the Ella key and depending on what they bring in here we just get our snarl off now and it gives them minus one again okay and stat modifiers are wiped when they pull them back and put them back out right correct okay. so they're gonna go back into chandelier here which this is, again is just fine because chandelier is a special attacker it's gonna go back to minus one and we still have our screens up and, and the like, fairy still Clefairy. burned through all of this the fairy's just sitting there chipping away at its own health yeah, so, uh, Clefairy... Has Clefairy not been taking burn damage, or am I just saying things? No, it has been. You're good. Okay. Uh, so do we swap out Comfy then, and then Moltres is our final finisher? I actually like going into, uh, into Moltres here. Okay. And this is a dark Moltres, it's not an alt art shiny? Correct. It is, it is dark and flying <laughs> compared to... Oh, it has Magic Guard. Oh, okay. So I was gonna say Clefairy normally has an ability. Uh, you just want to go ahead and Dynamax here. I say go this for, is our this is our nuker. So uh, just go for an airstream into the Clefairy. Uh, you could you actually could go into the Chandelure here. It doesn't really matter. Like we're we're gonna try to pick up a KO either way. And we're so, just snarling here still. Uh, you could go for the Sacred Fire into Clefairy to try to pick up the double KO this turn, which I actually yeah, think is correct. I like it. Um. All right, Big so, Bird, let's go. So, uh, Clefairy normally has an ability called Friend Guard, which reduces its allies' uh, damage by a quarter. It still takes full damage, but its ally takes 75%. So, it's basically free screens as long as you can cle uh, keep Clefairy in. But our their Clefairy hasn't been taking burn damage because it has the ability Magic Guard instead. Uh, which says that instead of any damage that would be dealt to it has to be dealt by attacks instead of uh, like status conditions or like end of turn effects or anything like that. Like Life Orb, which our Gold Duck was holding, doesn't affect Clefairy. 
Nailed it. So what's really good about this is now our Moltres gets the speed boost. So it maybe is faster than Elekin. Okay, and where did the speed boost here? come from? Is that a, a mod uh, item or? Um, it had it used max airstream there. Oh, airstream gives us speed. Matters. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Which notably uh, not only affects Moltres but also affects our allies. So Entei also is a plus one speed here. He's a good boy. The are they on is, one? Are they on one here, or they have two still? They still have one more besides the elephant. Okay, yep. They do have so the we're, on, we're, on, we're on three. So, here I really like going for a max darkness into the Eliki, and I like going for a Will o Wisp into the Glass Rear. Um, so, Will o Wisp is eighty-five percent accurate. It does no damage, but it guarantees a burn. Whereas Sacred Fire is 90% accurate and has a 50% chance to burn, but it does damage. So there's there's give and take of how you want to dictate the game, but we really, really need the burn on Glass Rear to guarantee that we can actually live hits from it. So Will-O-Wisp is more likely to get the burn uh, by actually connecting than Sacred Fire is by connecting and getting the burn. Oh right, yeah, so the we're 85% to burn versus uh, 95 times 0.5, so like we're almost twice as likely to burn with Will-O-Wisp. Yes! Yeah. But at the downside, you're that's really weird. <laughs> I don't understand here, Jeff. This is not what I anticipated. This isn't what I signed up for. <laughs> they were supposed to go big with the horse. Well they wanted the bolt they wanted to bolt the bird, Carter, and you played some Kiki, so you know it's always right to bolt the bird. I, I played my handful of matches in not in, in modern. I know how this works. But what's really great is because they hit us with an electric move, they triggered our weakness policy for us. So we do get the burn off on the glass rear. That doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, glass rear is just gonna sit there the rest of the game. We're we we are worried about this electric blob across the field from us, which is gonna get one shot here. So, um, it, I, I talked about the weakness policy and how how it. You know, you, when you get hit by a super effective attack, it triggers it. Um, notably, that doesn't matter where the super effective attack comes from. So what you see from a lot of players is if they have a weakness policy on their team, they usually have some way of triggering it themselves. What's uh, uh, which weakness policy from the from the top? What does that what does that mean exactly? Uh, weakness policy is a held item. Um, okay. So whenever it's hit by a super effective attack. It's special attack and its attack are double. And they okay. get plus two to both those stats. Um, so what we do on this team with the Moltres is Comfey is a fairy type, has the ability uh, triage, which means it's moves that heal itself or heal an ally gain plus three priority. So not not like Grassy Glide, we're talking on the same level that Fake Out is. So because you're extremely fast with Comfey, you outspeed a bunch of the fake out users anyway, so you can get your draining kiss off, which will do super minuscule damage to your Dynamax Moltres, but trigger your policy. Sweet. Makes sense? That does. I'm gonna run to the bathroom really quick. We'll be right back. Thanks for hanging out, folks. They'll still hear you, Carter, so you know. So I'm gonna sit here and entertain chat, is what you're saying. Jeff is already gone. He didn't hear me. Yeah, so. Yeah, Inte, Inte has really, really amazed me uh, this last last couple weeks. Um, this is a team that, like I said, I threw together for the uh, the PokePod Cup, which is a, a tournament series that we have going on between the uh, the Poke Sports guys, um, my por my podcast, which is Little Root Lessons, and then the Austin, Texas VGC group ATX. Um, us three are together uh, to form the the PokePod Cup, which our first tournament has been going on this last week. Um, I ended up going 5-0 and with it. So it, it's been phenomenal. I've, I've absolutely loved this team. Um, I, I actually kept track of stats for that tournament. And Moltres, I believe, went like 24-5 and in a KD over, the, over the, the course of five matches. So it was absolutely insane. Hey, it's really uh, awesome. We got almost 200 people in here tonight. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you're new to the channel, my name's Jeff Hoagland. I'm joined here with Carter Noble, who is our uh, resident Pokemon expert here in Hoaglandia. He is a host of the, uh, is it Little Lessons? 
Little Root Lessons. Little Root uh, the Lessons. Name, the name comes from the, the Gen 3, the first town that you start in is Little Root Town. And Carl and myself are huge, huge fanboys of Gen 3. So naturally, we had to come up with some some uh, alliteration on, on Little Root. So treat Little Root Lessons. So, so you absolutely, learn- absolutely love doing the podcast. Highly, highly recommend you uh, you check it out. Um, the Twitter is, of course, there in the, the chat command. And if you want to check out the podcast, it can be found anywhere that you can find podcasts, as well as our YouTube channel, which has all kinds of extra content on it as well. So Perfect. So we're leading Tapu and Entei first always, you said? Yeah, I. it's very rare that that's not what I do. Uh, in, this, okay. in this case, I, I fully agree with that. And I think I think I just like Comfey Moltres here in the back as well. Okay. Um, Snorlax is going to be kind of a problem to deal with, but if we just get a burn off on it, we don't really care. Okay. And then they have their own Metagross, but Moltres laughs in the face of Metagross. So, if you're if you're new to the channel, this is my first time doing Pokemon uh, VGC. That's why I've got Carter on here helping us out. They provided codes for the team. Someone asked for the Moltres code in chat. Uh, Carter, could you could you give that send that? For someone yeah, I, I'm looking it up. I just you, saw the message. You rock. Um, if you're new to the channel, I stream full time here on Twitch. I do uh, turn-based strategy stuff like this, as well as single-player story-driven games, as well as card games. So I'm here uh, 30, 40 hours a week. So be sure to give the channel a follow and stop back in sometime. This has been fun. We might we might do this again on stream. Uh, I, I've had an absolute blast. So any anytime you want me on, Jeff, I will be here. The amount of team combinations is staggering from moves to items, even how you allocate. Yeah, it seems like there's there's a ton there's a ton going on here. I feel like I feel like I could spend multiple nights just exploring different teams people give me to poke at before I even get into like building myself. And that's that's what's great about this current generation, is there are so many like Alright, pause. Many... What what am I doing? I'm assuming uh, we're putting probably... some kind of shield up. Are we using reflector light stream first? Um I'm more scared of the Snorlax, so I want to set up a Reflect first. Okay. And then probably just going for a Will-O-Wisp. On um, the Snorlax, because we wanted to burn it. Yep, got it. Sorry, sorry continue. Um, what, what's really great about uh, what they've added into Gen 8 is they've added the rental code system in, which I don't believe was ever accessible before this. So, um, before that, you had to build everything yourself. Um, or get like a pokey paste, which is another website where you can just import teams from like showdown and other sources like that into and have the basically the entire team's EVs, IVs, spreads, everything else on it, and then have to build the team manually yourself. Notably that Earthquake just did uh, that that Earthquake did twenty damage. Yep, I saw effective. that. Yep. <laughs> so do we always so, like screen second then just to get that going? We can. I see no reason not to here. Uh, the right. Galvantula is typically a special attacker, so getting getting that up, and then probably just going for a sacred, sacred fire, fire on the bug. Galvantula. Yep. And they they yeah. protected last turn, and we conveniently just didn't target it, which was perfect. Yeah. But notably, earthquake hits everyone else. So had they not protected, they would have actually earthquake their own Pokemon. Nice. Yeah. So. Uh, you, you see that a lot, uh, specifically with, like, Landorus is super popular right now, which is ground and flying. Okay. Um, and it's it historically is always just spammed Earthquake as, like, its main thing to do. So um, being able to uh, just pair it next to another flying Pokemon. What on to, God's uh, green earth? The Snorlax has a forest okay. on it? So this is something that they've added to this game in in addition to the typical Dynamax, they've added Gigantamax forms, uh, meaning that instead of the typical sprite that you get when you Dynamax, uh, the Snorlax has basically an entire park on it, <laughs> and it, its move, instead of being Max Strike for its normal moves, uh, is going to be G Max Replenish, which if it's holding a berry, it has a, I believe, 50% chance to regain that berry. Okay. So Man, again, like you weren't our, kidding our about opponent, Entei being thick. Our opponent is Dynamax here and did, a, what, 20 damage to us with its max move? Like, we're going to sit here in front of this Snorlax and just look at it and not care about anything it does. And now we Electroweb, right? And that'll knock out the Focus Band here? 
we can we can just go for electro web and then we can just go for a sacred fire into into snorlax just to get extra damage okay sweet T tinshika you thank you for the follow i appreciate that welcome to glendia yeah max max quick did 20 damage granted we have uh reflect up we have a plus one to our defense on entei our, my Entei is also extremely bulky as is, and then you add that in on top of the burn on Snorlax, and it just literally does no damage. Yeah, we are solidly... This is going exactly like you drew it up. We're just sitting here, just taking hits. Yeah, so uh, to comment on the, the rental code, you don't have to have the Pokemon. Which is even better. Yeah, uh, you, liter you literally just put the code in and it, it pulls all of them up. It's it's amazing. Yep. Yeah, I I did actual. I did actual nothing to get these mods, and other than Carter sending me that code and me loading it up, you just have to own Sword or Shield on the thing, and there's no microtransactions or booster packs or random bullshit. It's great. But but Jeff, how are they supposed to make their money? How how are you gonna feed the developers if you don't have microtransactions? <laughs> All right, do we sacred fire their new guy then to try and burn it? Sure. Uh, Pukamuku, I'm not going to lie. It's I have not no effective. Idea. All right, I'm going to Will-O-Wisp then because it's not effective anyways. It sure. probably won't do much damage with the higher chance to burn. I think it's like electric and water. I. Someone tell me what this thing does because right now I'm going to say it does actual nothing. Light him up, Ente. Pukumuku is water. It's a physical shield. Okay, it's mono water. You have it back. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to Hoglandia. So just like that, we've officially stalled out our opponent's Dynamax. Uh, granted, their Snorlax is at plus three special defense, which is really bad for our Moltres in the end game. But it should burn out, right? Yeah, we, we want to get rid of it before we go into that, but it's not going to be a problem. Uh, both of their Pokemon are burned. We're just going to sit here and spam Electro Web and probably Snarl, to be 100% honest. Snarl uh, reduces we, special attack. Yeah, which which could matter against the Pukamuku, but I don't think it will. So you can, you can either go for the Snarl, you can go for the Sacred Fire and the Snorlax. Like... At this point, I feel like we have locked this game up and are just waiting for us to officially take over. Mobile Flinging Tomatoes, thanks for the follow. Welcome to Glendia. That is a username. <laughs> Twitch, Twitch username, man. There's some really great ones. <laughs> it clicks soak. Okay, so it actually does nothing. I'm, I'm familiar with games that have garbage time. We're good. Yeah, this this is definitely peak garbage time right now. Wow, that Snarl did nothing to Snorlax. <laughs> well, notably, uh, they also have a light screen up. That That is one thing that Pukamuku did. Ooh, okay. Um, and Snorlax is at plus three special defense. And it has recover? I am very confused. And that, so, that wiped the burn off of it? Nope. No, it it just restores 50% of their HP, which is really annoying. Um, okay, so when when it comes oh, to... Oh, it recover, recovers the move, right? Like, got yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, can you hit Y for me real quick? And then click on the Tapu Coco. So this screen brings up anything that uh, we know, basically, about the Pokemon. So... On the left-hand side, it'll show any stat changes that we have, which currently is nothing on the Tapu Coco. It's just as is. But notably, uh, on that other side there, it shows that we have three turns of Reflect and three turns of uh, four turns of Light Screen. Left. Oh, okay, got it. So three out of eight, four out of eight. Got it. Yep. Yep. That, that was the the important part that I wanted to check. Um, so we can just click. Yeah, just. And I think it's actually correct to switch Entei out uh, in the subsequent turn. And just start trying to, to turn the corner here. Okay, we'll we'll uh we'll do that next turn. We're not running out of time. Strike YG, thanks for the follow. 
I don't, I don't think they're doing a whole lot anyways. Yeah, because the, the Pika Muku or whatever, it's just going to sit there and recover and do defensive stuff. Probably want to want to kill KO that. Yep. It is going to sit there and be as annoying as possible. Well, that was a solid hit on the Lax. Oh, that's really bad. So, Facade uh, doubles the damage that it deals if it's under a status condition. Okay, so this turn went really, really poorly for us. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, gaining the information that Snorlax has Facade is really bad for us. And the fact that they got the Toxic on, on the Entei means that it's slowly going to chip away faster and faster every turn. So we definitely want to get Entei out. So I think it's correct to bring in Moltres nope. here. Okay, so it can attack. Yep. And then we'll swap uh, Entei out for the Comfy. Yep. So I actually don't want to attack with Moltres this turn. Instead, I want to taunt the Pukamuku. Because it is not shown as a damaging attack. So taunting it means that it will have to either switch out or sit there and use struggle. And then so we Entei, want Entei, Entei, we're going to swap. Entei's going to go into Comfey, and this should all be fine. Someone someone said earlier that the, the Pukamunku does not have any actual attacks. Cool. That, that's really good to know. So we're going to get the taunts off. So now Pukamunku doesn't get to do anything this turn. Snorlax is going to get the facade off, but it is still burnt. It still does do quite a bit of damage. So, notably, that was through a reflect. So that should Correct. tell you how much damage Snorlax could actually do to us if yep. it actually got to do its thing. So here, we can go ahead and Dynamax. And, and Dynamax the Moltres? Yeah. And probably go for a Fiery Wrath into the Pukamuku slot. Uh, oh, yeah, Max Darkness. I'm sorry. Right. And then on Comfey, we want to use Draining Kiss on our Moltres. Oh, to trigger its weakness? Correct. Okay. Um, so what's actually super fantastic about Moltres, uh, it has the ability Berserk that once it gets under 50% HP, it gains plus one in its special attack as well. So there's a very good chance that between the Draining Kiss and the Facade that's gonna go into it as well, that Moltres is going to get to plus three this turn on its special attack. And then the following turn, we can use Floral Healing to get it back above 50% to then get it hit again to go under 50% to continuously do that to get that boost because it triggers every time. Oh, so it stacks It stacks up, you go above 50, and then back under, you get another bonus. Yeah, which right. is why this combination of Moltres Comfey is absolutely disgusting. Notably, the Pukamuku stayed in, so it's just going to use Struggle this turn. Interesting. Unless it has a damaging attack, which we haven't seen. <laughs> that does actually nothing. Yeah, they're yeah. gonna struggle. <laughs> well, isn't isn't that a good a good metaphor for 2020? Isn't the whole year just a struggle, Carter? <laughs> they're just they're just living their true self here, okay? Hey, as as long as they know what they're doing to themselves. Notably, this Pukamuku is at one HP, and our opponent's light screen just worn out. And we're but just max darkness into we're we're doing darkness on the Snorlax. Yeah, I would. Darkness into the Snorlax this turn. And then, then Comfey, you said could heal? Floral healing? Yeah, we can do floral healing. Uh, we could also click Ally Switch, which literally just switches the places of our Pokemon on the field. So I think I'd rather heal a Trace. Okay. So, Ally Switch, once you introduce it, it creates mind games in your opponent saying, hey, am I going to click Ally Switch this turn? Where hmm. are you going to attack? Okay. So, is dark good into the steel? This is very good for us. Okay. Um, with our weakness policy triggered, this should one-shot the meta bro. Yeah. All right. Sure. Yeah. Meta uh, Moltres is absolutely disgusting.
You struggle, little mon. mon. You struggle Good it job. out. You did it. Now what's great about this is the Snorlax comes in, and those boosts to its special defense that it got from Max are gone now, right? They're gone. Yeah. Yep. So now we can just go for a a max a max darkness into it, and we can click ally switch or we can click, uh, click draining kiss. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, let's draining just put kiss damage is on it. gonna move. Yeah, draining kiss is gonna move first, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. Oh, come on, opponent! I wasn't done. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. Yeah, move it on up. Yeah, that. This this team plays some very very long games. All right, give uh, me give me the equivalent of another ladder. Have we made it out of bronze yet? Where are we at on the ladder rankings? Uh, okay, so Rune Terra, you have is it iron then bronze? Yeah, we're in bronze. Okay, so we're, we're one we're one outside of it. Okay, yeah, one outside of the bottom. We're, yeah. Uh, well, actually, I think bronze. I think bronze is the bottom in Rune Terra. I don't, I don't actually remember. It's been a while since I've been down there. <laughs> that's where i hang out because i don't play very often so <laughs> um but you're, you're you're not the bottom but you're really close yeah i, I, I think Ente coco is just correct here normal open got it we need to watch out for the dragapult because it's going to outspeed our tapu coco but that really shouldn't be a problem and then they have a bunch of things that are weak to Moltres, so I just like uh, Moltres to come in the back here. Okay. And then what um, what does a team look like where we're not going Moltres comfy? Like when it when our Metagross and Mil Miltel are coming in? Uh, so Milotic is really good against stuff. Uh, its ability is competitive, so anytime that it has a stat reduced by an opponent, its special attack goes up by two. Uh, okay. So it comes in against a lot of things like Landorus or Incineroar that have Intimidate when they switch in, which would lower your attack, but Milotic doesn't care because it's a special attacker, so it's special attack would then shoot up by two. Okay. Um, and then Metagross was actually the last member I added to this team as well, uh, and I just kind of slapped it on because it's like the second most popular Pokemon in the format, and I'm not going to lie to you, I have it shiny and I wanted to use it. So, <laughs> at least you're honest, Carter. Look, I want you to know, I I was, I had a hundred percent win rate with Metagross in the tournament I played. Now, Every how many times game you... I brought it, I won. Okay, you played it. You did play him though. I I, I went four and zero with it. Okay, cool. I love so... Oreo. Thank you for the twenty two <laughs> months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. How do you get these Pokemon without grinding? You got to grind them up or you got to get a team copy from someone else. So in this case, Carter did the grinding for us here and sent me team codes. Here, here's a question, Carter. How many hours do you spend per Mon that you build, you think? If I'm not shiny hunting, I can get a Pokemon ready in probably... Starting, starting from, like, nothing... Uh, like, if I'm going out and catching the Pokemon, breeding it, and getting it competitively ready, it can probably take anywhere from, like, 30 minutes to an hour. Oh, that's way shorter than I was expecting to hear. Oh, yeah. It's it's insanely fast. Uh, if you're shiny hunting, it can take you a couple days if you're really unlucky. Uh, reflector light screen first here. Uh, ooh. This is really awkward because both are good. Probably light screen. Just because we can probably live anything from the Metagross. Are we sacred firing the Metagross? I actually want to Willow with the, the Metagross. Okay, uh, Metagross is the burn. primarily known for holding weakness policy in this format. So okay. being able to not trigger the policy but get the burn on it is super important. Okay. Look at that. Nice protect, Charizard. Bugger off. So that's actually kind of bad because I was anticipating the Charizard attacking and that's why I wanted the light screen up. It's fine. The Charizard basically but, wasted its turn, right? Yeah, but we get the, the burn off on the Metagross. So it's basically like we got a, a reflect up on it as well. And this should do approximately zero damage. That's pretty close to zero. And God, this Entei is a thick dog. <laughs> it's really good, isn't it? So here, now we can set up the, the Reflect. 
And at this point, I don't care about this Metagross the rest of the game. And I care about the Charizard more than anything else. So, so I want to click Willis or Snarl. Just Snarl, you said? You, you can't burn the Charizard, unfortunately. Okay, because that makes it is sense. a fire type. Stupid so, flavor, whatever. Yep. So the Snarl is going to hit the Metagross. Um, it's not going to lower its special attack, which we don't care about. Um, its ability stops any stat changes from happening from your opponent. So it's its special attack isn't going to drop, but it's a physical attacker, so it doesn't matter. But we are still hitting it with a dark move, so if it is weakness policy, it's going to trigger. But between Reflect and the the burn on it, its damage is pretty negligible anyway. Okay, so they're Dynamax, which makes the Snarl even better, right? Because they're committed to keeping this one out that we've Snarled. They can switch it out, but it doesn't really... It, it, most likely, they're going to keep this out. If they Notable. switch it out, does it keep the Dynamax charge when it comes back? No. Okay, yeah, so they, they don't want to switch it out. Basically. Correct. What's also really good about this, uh, Charizard is another one that has a Gigantamax form, and its Gigantamax attack is busted, where it does one sixth of your damage, uh, one sixth of your HP to both of your Pokemon every turn. So because it's not Gigantamax here, it's just going to do a max flare, which sets Sun, which doesn't matter. What's up, bud? Yep, yeah, I'm battling another person somewhere else in the world with their Pokemon. And this is my friend Carter up here on the screen. He's helping me learn how to battle because he's a Pokemon master. He's the very best, like no one ever was. I, I wouldn't go that far, but thanks for the confidence boost, Jeff. <laughs> Electroweb? <laughs> we just yeah. web, web from here, you said? Yep, Electroweb sounds great here. And then just another Snarl. Yep. What's up, dude? Uh, you know who that is? He, he is yeah, right. Coco. Is. I, I didn't even know who that was, so your Pokemon brain is bigger than mine. What? Letters look weirder than because they're, they're in a different language. Some languages use symbols instead of letters. God, that dog just like does not go down. <laughs> He's just like, nope, yep, you hit me. Great, nice Charizard. No, we're the we're that. This is N two. Uh, Lydroll, what, what you said there about Ditto giving you faster egg isn't completely accurate. Um, what having a Ditto in a different language does gives you uh, more likely to get shiny Pokemon. So do uh, we... The egg speed is actually the same. Do we Comfy then, because we're still in the lasted out phase? Yeah, you can you can switch into Comfy here, and just click Floral Healing on your Entei to make it go back up to basically full HP. Okay, that's, that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> Why is there Play-Doh in your hair? <laughs> no, Jacob did it? Sure. Pokemon, uh, I couldn't actually match. You can use the floor, floor healing. Yep, we're picking the dog here. Got it. Yep. And then we're just on the snarl plan to yep. weaken him up. I, have a play I do not, in fact, have a play to my hair. For anybody that's new to the channel, this is Declan. He's my uh, my middle child. How old are you? Five. Five? All right, good. I was just, I was just checking. I knew how old you were. Did, did you actually, Jeff? Or... Of course I did. Because <laughs> my dad would always say the same thing, too. <laughs> Sometimes I slip up and say two children still, because the new one's only five months old, but I'm, I'm good. You're five? Yep. Yeah, look at that dog. Only missing a quarter of his health. You're a good boy, Ente. <laughs> Shrug it off. Ente is disgusting and like this chip damage that we've put in on the metagross is really adding up here too yeah like we, we technically haven't even put in our beater yet right like Moltres Dynamax is at the very end to clean up and yep, yep our goal now at this point we could reasonably switch Entei out and 
uh, just like click ally switch here, which would actually what we could do is click trick room, which is going to reverse the speeds. Uh, but that could be problematic based on what they have in the back because they still have two Pokemon. So even though their Charizard is going to be faster, it could be that we want to set a trick room later so that our Moltres is the fastest thing on the field. Oh, because the Moltres so, is slow. It, it's pretty slow. Uh, my Moltres is an extremely bulky set, so we can actually live hits. I'm assuming we click ally switch. Yep. And then, yeah, Sacred Fire into the, the Metagross should pick up the, the KO there, pending that we actually hit it. Which I believe. So With that attitude, happen, Carter, if we miss, it's your fault. I would just no, like the record it, to reflect I that. I believe, Jeff. If it okay, I just happen, need you to trust. Entei's a good boy, okay? He's going to he's gonna hit the Metagross. It doesn't work. There you go. See, now you got this streaming thing down. <laughs> Shout outs to chat for not letting us down. I appreciate you all for believing. Metagross down. Also, that Meteor Mash that went into Entei, I think literally did four damage. <laughs> and then we just like healed the dog again next turn. He's like back up to full. Just like get dirty to keep tanking along. Yep. Okay, so that's really bad. That's really, really bad for us. We should we should we light it on fire? Actually, I think it's correct to go for a sacred fire into it. And the reason I say that, as weird as that sounds, we're going to sacred fire the water Pokemon here. Um, but we can also go for a draining kiss from Comfey okay. and recover like all the HP that Comfey is missing. Okay. Which keeping Comfey around is probably more important than keeping Entei around. Okay, because Comfey can trigger the weakness policy on the Moltres. Yep. Which, like, you know, just casually went from, like, a third of our HP back to 75% or whatever. Mm. That burn annoying, but not into the world. Good doggo. Good doggo. Good boy. Who's a good boy? Yes, you are, Entei. Wow, the We didn't kiss. get the burn. That's fine. The kiss the kiss should finish this, though, next turn. If there's yeah, not a focus point on it, right? Yep, we can go for another draining kiss here, which will pick up the KO on it. And I actually think protecting Entei this turn yep. is correct. Yep, just because it's either protect or snarl, and we've snarled the Charizard a few times, so protect seems good. So as long as they don't have protect on their Urshifu, it should pick up the KO here. Um, so Urshifu... Uh, the water form here has an attack that hits three times, but it always crits. So even though its damage doesn't look very good, I think it's a 25 base power, but it hits three times. Since it always crits, it goes through any stat changes that we have. Focus so Ash only one... works on full HP. Okay, that's good to know. So it just means you can't get one shot. It, it doesn't mean if you've gotten hit, you don't go down. Okay. Correct. So getting getting a burn on it, would it would deal damage with it, which would then break the Focus Sash. Um... Other things like weather, since hail and sand also deal damage, they break focus sash. Okay. And then just doing chip damage is another way of just breaking a focus sash if you need to. So they have Dragapult here, which is also weak to fairy because it's a dragon. So we can we can go for the sacred fire into it. Or actually we can go for a snarl because there's there's a non-zero chance that this is actually special. And then going for the draining kiss into it as well. Yep. And then we're going to be in a really... These are the last two mons. So we're going to be in a really good spot with Moltres here. So feel like we're a strong favorite from here. Yeah. Oh, 100%. We, we, it would take a lot for this game to not result in a win for us. Because we haven't Dynamaxed yet. So. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I forgot we had a, <laughs> yeah, a blow-up here. Listen, I'm used... We, we spent the first hour and a half killing people with the duck, okay? I'm still not... I still haven't fully adjusted to having a Dynamax at the end of the fight. Did that thing just fire rockets at me? No, it shot Pokemon at you. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, uh, Dragapult is supposed to be a B2 ghost dragon, and it shoots missiles, which are what it evolves from. It shot its children at you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, as a parent, I can empathize. <laughs> 
I don't condone this. Yeah, we can we can delete this and then we can trigger our policy and everything is wonderful and this dragapult gets to go home. I'm I'm using draining kiss on the Moltres to trigger the policy. Correct. So you mentioned you uh, played in a tournament last weekend. Do they, is that something that they do coverage for? Like, are those official tournaments, or are they run by the community? Like, what's the deal with those? Uh, so this tournament that we ran last week, um, I was actually a part of the planning crew for. Um, it is a, it's considered a grassroots tournament, basically, um, because it's not, it's open to basically everyone, but the majority of people aren't going to know about it, so it's a smaller community-based tournament, basically. Um, it was ran by... Uh, myself and Carl from Little Root Lessons. Um, there's the guys from the Pokey Sports podcast as well. And then the Austin, Texas VGC group, the ATX group. Um, it was us three. Um, our three groups came together and put together a tournament and had 90, 90 people play in it, which for our first one is phenomenal. Sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. And then so, is this, does this off, does you, this has some, some officials up on there. Can you like spectate matches in this or not? No, no, they're, they're for whatever reason, uh, full spectator support is really hard to program. Evidently, Jeff. I mean, I come from magic arena, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, notably you actually made a mistake here. The, uh -oh. the dragon Wolf used phantom force which makes it disappear it's like dig basically from oh other generations got it so uh notably our max darkness didn't hit last turn oh and, and now phantom my kiss isn't gonna, gonna hit this turn but then it'll come back and i'll get to it with darkness this turn okay correct i was wondering why it didn't die but we were talking and i didn't fully got it yep, that's, okay. that's why uh dragon Bolt used to be the fastest pokemon in the format so everything would you would be determined on if you could beat Dragapult because you could outspeed it. Um, okay. But because because uh, Reggie Eliki exists now, that's no longer the case. Still, still extremely fast, but nowhere near the fastest thing anymore. That's fine. They're super dead. Yeah. Charizard's at minus one special attack, and we can actually go for a draining kiss into it as well, just to just to you know give the rub ins. Yeah, there, there normally are uh, tournaments. I know years years ago, you played in a Pokemon TCG tournament in Collinsville. Yes, and there was a video game tournament in person there at the same time, I know. Correct. Yep. Uh, do you remember what year that was? Uh, 2018 or 2017, I think. So I was actually at that tournament as well. Riptide? <laughs> Riptide or Titan? Riptide. I think it was 17. If it was 17, I was Nothing. not there. Um, my my first VGC tournament was actually um, 2018 in Collinsville, um, where I actually played my boy Politoed, and it was great. Yeah, yeah Philly so, did go down with me. Uh, so the if it was 18, I was at that tournament as well, playing the VGC side. Um, but chat says it was 17, so I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? I think I have I have an article because I got scummed out of that tournament. Does yeah, that article still exist. Pokey It was 2017, so my article is from 2017. Yeah, so I was not at that tournament. Um, my first VGC tournament wasn't actually until 18. Okay, this might actually be a game where we don't lead Coco. Um, so they are going to try most likely to set up Trick Room. Um, they could try to set up Trick Room with P2 for their Marowak, or they could lead their Whimsicott and try to Tailwind, which would outspeed everything. So I think in this game, we actually want to be the aggressor and just lead Comfey Moltres. Okay. I think this is one of those situations where we just want to be the beatdown. And as a okay. result, I think we want Milotic and Metagross in the back. Okay, sweet. 
interested to try go, try them out. Yeah, just go pure damage this game instead of trying to tank attacks and play a long game. I and that's sweet. That's the uh, seeing the. I see why you described this as a mid range team then, because like we played a very controlling role for those first couple, and now based on their mon lineup, we're gonna pivot into a an attacking position now. Yep. So oh, I'm gonna. So I'm gonna open on Dynamax the Mole Trace and then kiss it to trigger the weakness policy. Potentially. Okay. Uh, so Moltres also has Taunt, which we saw, I believe, on the Rillaboom. Yes, um, we did. Yep. So depending on what they do here, uh, we can either taunt them to prevent them from setting up Trick Room, or if they lead Whimsicott, we could actually set Trick Room ourselves and reverse the speeds to make it where we're the slowest thing. This is a turn-based strategy game, much like a card game, Boo Shoes. Good evening. It, it, it's similar yet completely different all at the same time all right so what so are we dynamaxing or are we taunting i like dynamaxing um okay. i want to oh not you okay so we're gonna have you kiss the bird correct and i want to i want to do i want to airstream the whimsicott because Whimsicott has Prankster, so all of its status moves are actually going to be faster. Uh, they're gaining a plus one priority. Okay. Um, and they're most likely going to Dynamax the Metagross. So Whimsicott is going to set Tailwind, which then doubles all of their speed, which might make Metagross outspeed Moltres. This, is, this has actually been a lot of fun. I think we might do this again on stream at some point in the future, Blue Shoes. Carter said he, he wouldn't mind popping on again on occasion, so... It's been, it's been cool. We played two. T we, Carter prepared three different teams for us tonight. Um, we're through. Probably, probably only gonna play two. A couple of games with the last one at the very end, I think. That's a, I haven't played the last team at all. Um, Carl actually recorded a flattering video that went up on our YouTube channel today uh, with that team, and I actually haven't had a chance to watch it yet. So I'm interested to see how it plays because he said I would love it because it is a very aggressive team. So I'm interested to actually get to watch that and possibly even play with it tonight. How hard is it to grind a good competitive team after just starting? That's a good question. If you buy Pokemon and your Pokemon disc is empty, do you need to like play through the single player game before you can start breeding and stuff? I don't believe so. Uh, I believe you gain access to the first breeder within like the first 10 minutes, first like 15 minutes. Um, but the the big thing is is you need to be able to the best thing you can possibly do uh when it comes to competitive pokemon is get a six iv ditto because it makes breeding way 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 easier um so granted i've had one for a while now so any anything that i breed is super simple and super easy for me to gain access to but coming straight out from the gate it's a little harder to gain access to something like that. Okay, and um, as, as something of a sea creature myself, another question I have to have is, do people exist in this community that I could pay to, like, breed me Pokemon and trade them to me? Yes. Um, the big thing you have to worry about is them not breeding it and instead ginning it, basically using a program to program in whatever Pokemon you want and then trading it to you. And why is still... Why doesn't that work? It is still work? a legal Pokemon, um, but there are instances where if something, if they do it incorrectly, uh, will actually flag your account and make it where you can't play. You can't play online. Oh, okay. So like, it's technically against the rules. It gets you banned. Yes, it is. Okay. Which is why they've done so many things to make breeding way easier and making okay. competitive Pokemon way easier. Um, okay. So we actually went to Floral Healing our Moltres this turn. Okay. Um, oh, I, got, I got taunted. taunted. Um, That's really awkward. I gotta um, pick moves. So we can we can draining kiss, I guess, into the P two, and then we're at plus two on the Moltres. We can go for a max darkness into the Metagross. Oh, we're actually at plus three. So if this is, that's eh, really unfortunate. Are they just gonna set Tailwind here or a Trick Room here? That's, that's usually what we see P2 do in this format, is just set Trick Room. Which would actually Isn't, be... I would say Trick Room's good for us, right? Because that means my Moltres will go first next turn? 
No, because they didn't set Tailwind. Huh, this is really awkward. So we need we need Moltres to be to become healthy, but we can't heal it because Kumfei got taunted. So uh, if you can press Y for me real quick, if you back out and press Y and click on Kumfei. So we're taunted for two more turns, meaning we can only use Draining Kiss for two turns. Um, so what I think is correct here is to actually switch Kumfei out into into our own Metagross. Okay. And then this turn, I want to max guard with our Moltres. Okay. Otherwise, it's going down. Yeah. Which once once we once this turn is over, we're still the fastest thing on the field, pending that they don't set a trick room this turn. Um, but if they do, that's fine because we have our Moltres, uh, we have our Comfey, which can reverse trick room, and we also have Metagross, which is pretty slow as is. So they actually went for the double max guard there um, because they wanted to. Uh, so pr the way protect works is it always succeeds if you didn't use protect the previous turn. Okay. Uh, since they did, it instead has a one in nine chance of working. And it, it's multiplied by that one ninth factor every time. So okay. there's, been, there's been games where my opponent has had, or I believe it's a, I believe it's one in nine. It might be one in three. Someone correct me about that because I, I can't remember. So here, we can go, I like going for a Meteor Mash into the, uh, into the Porygon and going for a Fiery Wrath because Moltres is still the fastest thing on the field. Okay. So we're still at plus three special attack. So rental, rental codes are super cool and easy boost shoes. You literally just enter a code in and the team appears in your client and you play with it directly as is from the code that someone gave you. Like, all these teams that I have, Carter just sent me codes and they appeared in my client. So, like, you just enter, you enter that Entei code there that the first one is, you'll have this exact team that we're currently playing with. Okay, it is, it is one-third, it's multiplied by one-third every time. Um, so, had they actually succeeded, that would have been a one-in-nine chance for their, their Protect to work this turn. Oh, the hail was so close. All right, we're we going back to Comfey or are we putting out the Militic? Uh, we can actually go into Comfey here and we can Draining Kiss to pick up the KO on the P2. Okay. That should be enough to pick up the KO. Because Comfey, oh, yeah. Comfey is super quick, right? Yep, it has plus three priority on its on its uh, Draining Kiss. Really? Okay, that's sweet. Yeah, it's really good. And then we can actually go for a Stomping Tantrum into their Metagross. Yep. Is there, does it list in client that moves have plus priority or is that listed somewhere else? Uh, it's its ability, uh, which is listed in client. It, I believe okay. its ability is worded as, uh, let me let me just look up the official wording so I can tell you how it's worded. That's a good question. Someone asked, can you use rental teams for tournaments? I assume you can, just like the latter. Yes. No, yes. So we haven't had in-person events in forever. So I can't tell you how they work in person, um, but I know in uh, in like the grassroots tournaments or anything else that you play online, you almost 100% of the time can use rental codes. You, you can't, can't use them for in-person events. That's very silly, but all right. Yeah, I mean, it makes sure it, it's to make sure that you have the team. I guess I don't know. I. I couldn't actually tell you the reason. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how that makes... Like, it's not like magic where, like, using proxies makes them less money, right? Correct. So, I, I don't understand the idea behind not being able to, but... Hey, Osprey, thanks for loving much. Yeah, this has, been, this has been great. So, notably, uh, our Stomping Tantrum uh, activated a weakness policy on their Metagross. But yep. our Metagross is faster than theirs because mine has speed EVs invested into it to be specifically out fast uh, to out uh, faster people. than theirs. Okay. Yeah. So I should so KO we, their Metagross we, here. Reasonably, 
yeah, we can go for the KO on the Metagross. And here, we can click Protect. Do we want actually, to... I, I actually want the Feeny to hit us. Do we uh, just scold the Feeny? Sure. Uh, Tapu Feeny is a uh, Water Fairy, so neither of our attacks are going to be effective against it. And its ability makes it where it can't be uh, afflicted of a status condition as long as Misty Terrain is up, which is five Lord. turns. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, maybe we're just supposed to tap the Metagross to guarantee it goes down. Okay, they're, they're just going to go for the Protect here, which is also fine. So they're going for Calm Mind, which boosts their special attack and special defense by one, which means that their damage is going to be increased, and they're also going to take less damage from our Milotic, which could be annoying. Uh, notably, we have our Metagross still, which is fine because we have Thunder. The Metagross has, has Lightning on it, right? I probably want a Stomping Tantrum into their Metagross again, though, right? I would love to delete their Metagross first. And I think, um, I think, I think a bigger problem. I think I did almost no damage to that Feeny anyway, so I'm gonna Scald here just in case it lives on a sliver with our. It shouldn't. Um, and there's there's actually a chance that they go for the double here, uh, double protect. And if they do, it could be problematic for us, but they don't. Uh, because had they had they gone for the double protect and they actually hit it, then we essentially wasted our turn. Mm, okay, that's fair. Whereas we know that the stomping tantrum is enough to KO it, so there's there's really no reason to actually double into the metagross there. Does that make sense? So Milotic is holding leftovers. Uh, I'm I'm assuming you're familiar with leftovers. Correct. Those were in Gen Two, I believe. Yeah, it was the signature item of Snorlax. Uh, Snorlax. Yeah. So. Yeah, we can just continue to scald the Tapu Fini. Is our dam is our highest damage output on Milotic, and they're just gonna go for another Calm Mind. Hopefully, Thunder Punch is enough to take it out here. I'm really interested in seeing this damage output from Metagross. Close. Oh, oh that crit was huge though. Which is really unfortunate because I'm not sure Metagross can live a Muddy Water now that they're at plus two Calm Minds. So this end game is going to be really, really slow. Yeah, so we can see, we could go in here and see they've got Misty Terrain up for two more turns. They've got two plus attack and two. It's really neat to be able to go in and see, see that. Five turns, Pokemon on the ground, won't get any status condition. Damage from Dragon Tick moves its house. Which notably doesn't matter for us, yep. um, but it does matter that we can't burn the Tapu Fini, which would be our best way of removing it at this point. Zero, thank you for the prime support. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me oh, around. You're right. we, we do have Assault Vest, and they missed. So because they missed the Muddy Water there, we're guaranteed to pick up this KO. Yeah, uh, the the subreddit is r slash VGC. Ton of good content on there. Um, and it's actually a fantastic way of, like, as a beginner to go in and just say, hey, this is my team. What do you all think of this? Granted, you're going to get a lot of the internet people on there. Oh, this is really bad. And that obviously is piss poor feedback. Hon honestly, I think, like, the advice for learning a card game seems like it applies here as well i feel like if i want to dive into this more and i might like my first thing i'm going to do is like i want like a dozen different team codes from other people i don't want to build anything i don't want to train anything i want to understand why these teams that are already good are considered good learn what their matchups are how they play out i, I feel like i would probably spend you know double digit hours learning existing teams before i even touched building my own that is 100% the way to do it, and I wish I did that when I started. Uh, when I started, my, my first tournament I played in 2018 in Collinsville, and um, Landorus was really, really popular then. It was the most played Pokemon at that tournament, I believe. And so going in, I'm just like, all right, I want to beat Landorus. So I built a Politoed Mega Swampert team, which also has the Swift Swim ability. 
Um, the problem is, is that I was really, really weak to bulky grass type Pokemon. Go -go shirt. Believe... Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, and, Coco uh, and Faye looks great. And then Comfe Moltres as the follow up always. Do we, do we ever Coco Ente start and not Comfe Moltres? Yeah, there's there's instances like this is actually one of them where I'm debating if I want Milotic because it hits our opponent super effectively on four of their six. Okay. But the two the two that it doesn't hit super effectively we're extremely weak to. Okay, yeah, because they've got the electric idiot down there. I see. Yeah, they have their own Coco, and then they have an Eliki, which those two together is extremely scary. So I definitely want Moltres, right? Um, I, I think it's correct to go Molt Moltres Comfey here. Okay. Um, like as good as as good as Milotic would be. Um, the problem is is that they set Sun with their Torkoal, which would right. then half the damage from our our damage output on our Water moves, which would be super effective against them. Hunter, so yeah, I, I, follow. Think I think it's correct to lock in Comfey here. Sure. Maybe like yeah, a decent so, game to stream too, because there's downtime in between. There's these timers. We got things to talk about. Yeah, plenty, plenty of time to be able to to talk about things while also being able to have you know back and forth conversations. Yep. And a little, little bit of storytelling in here, or there. So, uh, so this tournament I played in 2018, um, I was extremely weak to bulky grass types, and I believe in the nine rounds I played, I played against bulky grass types eight rounds. <laughs> um, notably. My, my good friend, uh, Nate, who I met at this tournament, um, his favorite Pokemon is Meganium, and always said, I'm going to make Meganium work. Uh, we met in the 0-5 bracket, and I lost to Meganium. So... <laughs> so, I want to lead on Light Screen here? Yes, Light Screen is very, very important in the face of what our opponent is doing here. And are we trying um, to set someone on fire? I actually think it's correct to Snarl, Okay, because they're both special attacks, most likely. So just want to get that get that ticking down, get our survivability up. It might have also been correct to protect. Uh, the the gold the Golduck team we played to start tonight, Boo Shoes has a scissor on it actually. And the Golduck team was busted. Best team in Pokemon. It has only lost one game, and that's all because of Persian. So, notably, um, their Eliki did go for the Electro Whip there, which is what ours does, where it tries to slow things down. Okay. But that's kind of just fine. Like, we don't care about being fast. That's not our goal. Our goal yep. is to prevent them from having fun. <laughs> All right, so do we get Reflect Up then, too? I don't think we actually need it here. Would you rather um, just do Electro Whip? I would rather just start firing off Electro Webs to match them. Okay. And then I just, Keep like, the click the up. Yep. Someone says you a rental code for a team that used gend Pokemon. Would you get risk banned by using it? No. Um, if I knew they were gend, I would just not want to play it. But um, what if you did? What if you didn't know they're gen? Basically, someone's asking like, okay, if I'm taking random if, codes if off the internet. For you, um, th there's there's a chance that it is, and that that is what it is. You have to deal with it. But it only the only problem with ginning is if something goes wrong, and majority of the people that do it do know what they're doing, which is kind of the problem with it. Um, because Nintendo doesn't really crack down on it at all, and just says, sorry, which is really unfortunate. Because for someone like me who spends hours upon hours trying to get shiny Pokemon to make them look cool, people can just use their credit card and say, here, make them for me, which sucks. But at the same time, it's all cosmetic, so it doesn't really... Am I hearing we might have donation Pokemon teams? That could be fun if people want to send would, me teams to play. I would love that. I would absolutely love seeing that. All right. They knocked our... Our thick boy went down. So who I are think we, it's who correct we to go into Moltres here. Okay. And we're just going to try and go on the offensive? I think so. I think that sounds correct. Um, I want to deal with this Torkoal before we deal with the Charizard. So, are we electrowebbing then? That seems fine. It guarantees that we're faster than the Charizard the next turn as well. Okay, and then I'm going Dynamax here? 
Yep, we'll Dynamax and we can go for a Fiery Wrath into it. The Max Darkness? Yeah, sorry, Max Max Darkness, yes. Into the into the turtle we're killing. Yep. Let me donate so you can nickname the shiny the shiny gold duck after me. I've been waiting for this moment for five years. So I don't, uh, that's I, actually uh, one of the channel reward or the channel points rewards on my stream. I actually have to nickname Pokemon. That's great. So that, that is actually something you can do if you uh, if you go drop me a follow on Twitch and actually hang out. Most, nice most all the codes you're gonna find on the internet are going to be legal because they have to pass the game's hack check. That's great to know. I appreciate that information. So, uh, musical down here in chat is Carl. He's my co-host of the podcast. So, um, I would take his word as as basically law when it comes to this stuff. He knows way more about this game than I do, and he's been playing way less, uh, way way shorter amount of time when it comes to competitive. So we didn't pick up the KO on the turtle, but that's fine because if it goes for an eruption, uh, which is, it is like the, the dragon move we saw from the, uh, the Reggie Draco earlier, where it's based on their uh, remaining HP, it's going to be greatly reduced because its HP is next to nothing at this point. Okay. But they do just go for the Heat Wave, which is actually perfect because it's going to put us in range where we can trigger our Berserk on our Moltres. Coco doesn't quite go down to the Flames there. So this turn, uh, the Turtle is at minus one Special Defense, so we can go for an ele another Electro Web here. And we can actually go for and max airstream into the charizard okay get our guys faster yeah make sure we're faster because right now we are faster than the charizard so as long as they don't click max uh max guard here we're gonna connect and we're gonna outspeed whatever they switch in here as well yeah that's that's unfortunate it it makes sense that they would go for it here but it kind of sucks because now we essentially waste a turn of our dynamite I mean, we we traded a turn on Dynamax, right? And I mean, like, and it's not it's not really wasted because the web the web traded there anyways, so it's not like it was yeah. gonna accomplish anything. You are correct. Like, it it's not one for oneing. I mean, we're not losing it. It's more one for one. We're just thanks for the different. thanks for the sixteen months, Sensen Hammer. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So, I feel so like I need at least one more session, maybe two, of real teams before we take meme teams. Need to need to get my get my beats underneath me, and we probably uh, want to start on healing the Moltres here. I imagine. I would love for our Moltres to gain some HP, and they bring out the Elki, which is kind of annoying. Because the Elki's yeah, faster. Is yeah, it's it's definitely going to be faster because we didn't get the airstream. Does the Does the, the floral stream have priority or no? Yes, it does. Okay. But the Moltres is going to get hit. So do we do we airstream... Do we darkness the Eloki then? Or do we airstream the Charizard? Uh, we can darkness the Eloki. That should be enough to take it out. The question is, is are we going to be able to live whatever the Eloki does to us? Yeah. If we, do, we are, we are, we we are flying. And we're yep. at less than half HP. Yeah. That's going to hurt. Oh, they're going to Comfey. That's, that's even better. That's great for us, right? Yep. Focus. Yeah, Comfey has the Focus Sash. So, Comfey has done its job this game and, and gave uh, Moltres, you know, half of his HP back. So, okay. nice. that's, all we need, that's all we need Comfey for. It's, and Comfey, it's, and Comfey's going to get another heal on the Moltres next turn, right? Uh, no, because they this this Charizard was the Gigantamax form, so it was able to set up Wildfire. Oh, like yeah, got it. Get residual damage to us. But notably, the Charizard not only is Life Orb, but they also have the ability Solar Power. So they're doing a ton of damage to themselves. But uh, now... Are we one to one now here? Or do they have another They have another Mon? If they have another Mon, we're I probably dead. They both have one left, right? Do no, we? No, I think, I think we're down to just Moltres and we're dead then. Yeah, they have another one. Okay. You're impressed. I'm interested in VCG. I'm surprised. I, I wish I would have tried this sooner. This, like, hits all the things I'm looking for in a game, pretty much. When when I told Carl that you were interested, uh, it's actually correct to go... Oh, okay. Uh, I agree either way. Yeah, Fiery Wrath hits both of them. 
So oh, okay. it, it is correct to go for that here just to get uh, to break the sash that's on the Whimsicott and then do the residual damage to Charizard and knock it out. But okay. it doesn't matter. Uh, we didn't get the airstream off, so that meant that the uh, the Whimsicott was going to be faster than us there. So close game, but unfortunately not quite enough to pull it out. Losing losing Entei there was actually really yeah bad. the Entei the Entei the Entei going down quickly there was a was a big deal. I think that was the difference between our teams that were our runs that were successful and our ones that weren't right. I I think so. All right, let's try this last one for a little bit for the last half hour or so. Get in a couple okay. of minutes, maybe. I need I need Carl to tell me what this does. So if he's still in chat, that would be great. Oh um, oh no. Okay. So I know the general idea of what we're doing here. Um, okay. If you, actually, if you want to, if you hit A for me, and then, ooh, actually, yeah, this, this is fine. We'll figure it out on the fly. Uh, <laughs> but this is a hyper offensive team here uh, with the core of Nihilego, Urshifu, and Tornadus, all of which apply immense pressure to our opponent. Uh, especially when we back it up with Kartana as well. I know All you right. have no idea what I just said. Tell me which there. squiggles. I'm gonna need you to refer to them by the line that they are on, because they are all in squiggles. <laughs> okay. So, I believe this is Urshifu Dark down here in the bottom. Okay. And yeah, this is this is just all offensive threats minus Cliff Fairy. So it really is. What does our team do against theirs? And if that's the case, I really like the microwave. Which one's that? The fourth line. Okay, got it. Yep. Um, and I like it next to... I like it next to, I think, Nihilego, which is the top one there. The the name that's in English, conveniently. I should call Declan back in here to translate for me. <laughs> and then, I think in the back, I like... Uh, the second one, which okay. is Tornadus, Tornadus and then I like okay. Urshifu, which is the bottom one. Got it. Yep. Remember that one. Yeah, we could definitely put up a Pokemon uh, BCG channel in the subs Discord for sure. Yeah, that, that actually sounds great. And if you're really interested in getting into this, um, definitely check out the podcast. Check out the YouTube. Um, Carl and I yeah, have you should check own. out. Feel, feel free to link your, your Discord too, Carter. Yeah, for sure. Um... Uh, Carl, can you get that link? Or do I'm all, all for community stuff as well. Check out uh, Carter's podcast and stuff also. But I'll, I will also put one. For people that are that are subs to the channel, we'll put one up in the subs Discord too. For people that want to poke at me. So I, also, I also think, like, I know there's obviously a lot of depth here too, but I think, like, letting my kids poke at this too, I think they can have fun. This could be something to do together with them too. Asukao, thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. All right, so what are we what are we doing? We got a Zapdos and an Inteleon. Oh, I know Inteleon. He's a uh, he's my he was my starter. All right, so I've got a Thunderbolt here. Do we just bolt the Water guy? Carter, if you're talking, your audio dropped out. Is that on me or is that on How you? How about now? Uh, you're you good. Me? Yep. Okay. Uh, when I was copying the link, my hotkey is also the key to. Like ah, control key is my I got you. I got you. All right. Well, I, I fired off some some type advantage attacks to start. <laughs> okay. So this is actually super cute what they're doing here. Uh, Inteleon gets the ability uh, gets the attack Soak, which changes the Pokemon from whatever type it is to Mono Water. This is important because now Zapdos has Thunderbolt or Thunder or whatever it has is going to hit Nihilego super effectively. Not if but it's it dead, Carter. If it's dead. <laughs> Delete target Zapdos. Hold the shift key. So, um, what just happened there? Nihilego used the attack Meteor Beam, which is normally a two-turn move. Um, but we have the item Power Herb, which makes it where instead of charging a turn and then attacking, we just attack once. Meteor and that happens only also, one time. Correct. Okay. Meteor Beam also makes it where uh, the turn that it would charge, you get plus one to your special attacks, and then when you use it, it deals extra damage. Um, so now we're plus one special attack on Nihilego. We got plus a two. Boost, so we got an extra plus one. So now Nihilego's set up. It's, it's good to rock and roll. 
So here, okay. I want to overheat the Metal forward. Gross. I actually like going for the Thunderbolt into Inteleon to pick up the KO on it. Okay. And I actually, I wanna really want to find the next Nihilator. Yeah, because we're powered up now, right? Actually, mm, this is really awkward because we can't hit Metagross super effectively. I mean, that's probably fine, right? Because it's probably got the, the what's it called that stops him from... Yeah, you're probably right. It's probably correct to just go for, like, a rock fall into it. Sludge Bomb won't, won't deal damage to it at all, so... That's awkward. Maybe I'm it's supposed to... Maybe I'm supposed to use this Dynamax, or not Dynamax, this one, have this one kill off the water, idiot, and then have the other one hit the Metagross? Could be, uh, we could we could Dynamax the, the Rotom, which is the microwave. Yep. Uh, we could Dynamax it. It is the microwave. <laughs> what it is. Lizardio, thank you for the 31 buns. Hoot hoot. Good evening. This is going to hurt. That really hurt. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, like, we're, they're about to be down two mons, so we're down, like, a mon and a half. That seems fine. The problem is, is you click Meteor Beam. So whenever oh, you... Oh, did I? I thought I Dynamaxed. Shit. You did. You you did click it. But because you backed out at the last second, ah. whenever you back out, it negates your Dynamax, too. Got it. Yep. I was running out of time. I messed it up. No, you're fine. You're fine. Well, I mean, all in all, that's probably not the worst, because, like, okay, this is going to survive, and, like, this Mon doesn't have good attacks against their Metagross anyway, so, like, Dynamaxing something that's not great into their Dynamax doesn't seem great. Yeah, I, I agree. Especially, that would have knocked us out, but because they, uh, they went for the Soak on turn one, we turned Mono Water, so it wasn't super effective. <laughs> I love my Soggy Nilego. <laughs> Who's a good little soggy Nilego? Yes, you are. All right, so do we overheat the Metagross? I actually like to Dynamax uh, and go for... Actually, ooh, no. Well, our life total's so low, right? We don't want to Dynamax yeah, one this low? Right, right. We can just go for the overheat and hope hope to all that is holy that for some reason this isn't... Uh, this oh, isn't... no. Not my soggy Nihilego. If this is weakness policy, we're in a really bad position. Oh, that's true. Oh, no. We activated hopefully, their trap card, chat. Hopefully they went for Max Quake. They didn't. Jeff, were dead. <laughs> this went from like 10 to 2 real quick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now we're going to Dynamax one of these other guys. It's going to be fine. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be fine. Yeah, we can bring out the Tornadus, we can bring out the Urshifu, and everything is right in the world, and everything will be okay. Okay, who am I Dynamaxing? Okay, um, probably the Tornadus. Okay. The guy on the cloud. The cloud, yep. See, I put the context clue together with its name. So we and can then... go for... We can go for the... Uh, the the max knuckle so you want to dynamax here so oh, yep because i backed out yep got it you want a max knuckle we're gonna kill the incinerator yeah okay. which is then going to give us an attack boost on our urshifu and we can wicked blow into the metagross okay i like it and i hope that tornadoes is faster than uh than urshifu here because again, I don't. Oh yeah, this is no. Yeah, this is thunderous. I'm sorry. <laughs> so there's three genies. There's tornadoes, thunderous, and and landorus. And landorus is the only one that I actually like because it's the most played one. So the other two I don't know. <laughs> so I've been sitting here calling this the wrong name the entire time. Listen, there's squiggles two, three, four, five, and six to be okay, <laughs> Carter. So I don't. It's. Nihilego and then the microwave and everything else. Alright, cool. Luckily, luckily we. And these back. are their last two mods, right? So we're just like good to go. So it doesn't really matter what Incineroar does here. It's not picking up two KOs this turn. Ow, that really hurt. 
See? Game's easy, Jeff. <laughs> Goodbye, friend. So, I see we're in the Great Ball ranking now. Does it go Ultra and then Master then? Yep. So, uh, Ultra Ball is Tier 10. And then okay. Master Ball is Tier 11. Okay. And is that the tippy top or is there something above Master? Nope. Master Ball is it. That is the tippy top. At that point, uh, you get an overall rating. Instead of instead of a tier, you get a rating. So, you're... Okay, cool. So, like, like cool. the ladder points on Runeterra's Masters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's the reverse where you want the lower number. The lower number is the higher up on the ladder rate okay. you are. So pretty pretty self-explanatory. It's your overall rating in the Master Ball tier. It's it, it's very similar to Arena's ladder in that in that regard. Bringer of Fubis, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Welcome to Oplandia. Welcome to everybody hanging out tonight. If you're new, hold on just a minute. I'm going to finish my plugs after Carter tells us what we're doing here. Man, you're putting a lot of pressure on me tonight, Jeff. I don't like this. <laughs> we should go back to the duck team. The duck team. The duck team was carrying us. Jeff knows what to do with the duck team. Okay, so they have... Uh, it looks like three flying Pokemon, but one of them is Landorus, who is ground, so he's immune to electric. But I still like Rotom. Okay. And I want to... I think I like Nihilego as well. Okay. Granted, we need to watch out for Metagross and Landorus with it, but it should be fine. We'll be fine. And then in the back, I like Urshifu and Thunderous as well. I, I, just the same four, I think, is okay. fine. Cool. So Thank you're, you. you're plugging. Sorry. Right. Thanks, everybody, for dropping in tonight. My name is Jeff Hogan. I'm joined here by Carter Noble. Uh, I stream full-time here on Twitch. This is my first time dipping into uh, Pokemon VGC, but it's been a lot of fun. I think we're going to definitely revisit this again. Shout-outs to Carter, who runs the Little Root Resources podcast. There's a ton of competitive Pokemon VCG stuff that's good at helping people get started. He hooked me up with these team and helping guide through how we're, how we're playing in some of them here. If you enjoy the content, I do a lot of other uh, turn-based strategy games. I play a lot of card games on this channel, as well as some single-player uh, story narrative driven stuff i'm here uh 30 40 hours a week usually a few hours every evening and a few hours every morning if you enjoy the vibe and the feel of the channel make sure to give us a follow you can also find me on youtube everything i stream gets cut up there in full as well as uh shorter highlight videos as well all right landris eleki hmm so the lightning idiot is the fastest thing in the game, so it's gonna go first. You said, right? Okay. All right. Um, the only thing that would make that different is if the Landorus is Choice Scarf, which would make it uh, give a 1.5 times boost to its speed, but right. then it's into whatever move it uses. So I think it's fine. I kind of like going for a nasty plot here. Okay. Uh, which will it'll raise our special attack by two. Okay. And then I kind of like just going for the meteor beam into the the Eliki and just trying right, to just try just try and KO it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you said the Eliki doesn't take hits that well usually, right? Because it's quick. No, it, it is extremely fast and very frail. I believe its defenses are base fifty in both, which is just absurdly low. Evening, Vmic. That is one angry looking mon. He is very angry, that is correct. That did a lot, and I don't like that. Oh, does it switch itself back out? That's rude. Yeah, so it used Volt Switch there, which hits and then switches out. They're actually gonna bring in the Draco Vision, which is actually fine. Pending that Landorus doesn't set up sand, which is probably what's gonna happen here. Uh, so Landers is probably going to go for a rock fall into the Rotom, which then is going to set sand. And much like Golduck, uh, Dracovish has the ability. Dracovish uh, has no abilities, Carter, because he's I'm dead. I'm sorry. I didn't want to actually talk. <laughs> <laughs> that, that turn went very well. I'm not going to lie. It went exactly like we drew it up because you're excellent. And this team is great. You know, minus the microwave dying. 
That one, that one wasn't part of the plan, but... You know, sometimes a boulder falls on you. What are you, what are you gonna do, really? <laughs> um, what do we like here? I like the flying idiot, I think. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's just go... Not to enough three. to know his name, but you like him to use him in a battle. <laughs> Look, I referred to him. I put him on the team. I didn't put him on the team, but he's here. <laughs> Somebody liked him enough to put him in on the Ella keys now. Ugh. Am I saving my Dynamax for the monkey at the end, then? I don't think so. I think going for the Dynamax here is fine. So you don't think we're going to get KO'd by the Ella key? No, because we're also electric. Oh, okay, right, right. So we're yeah, neutral, then. So we can actually Dynamax and go for the max uh, airstream into the Landorus. Okay. Because that will let us outpace them the following turn. And then I probably just want to sludge bomb something here. I actually like going for protect here. Okay, I like that. Yeah, definitely not Meteor Beam, so we're not going to survive to do that again. Yeah, if they want to switch their Eliki out into that slot again, uh, their, their Volt Switch is going to fail and they're going to be stuck in. Does Thunderous live this rock fall, though? That's the real question. And I think the answer is maybe? That would, that would be real bad if our Dynamax got KO'd. It would be, yeah, it'd be exceptionally bad here for us. I am a genius. <laughs> So unlike the other two genies, uh, Landorus is pretty bulky in this in this form that he's in. Whereas uh, Thunderous and Tornadus normally don't care about bulk and just invest into speed and whatever damage against that they use. Okay, well we survived a hit, so everything went better than expected, I suppose. That turn I don't think could have actually gone any better for us. All right, so we just air streaming again. I, I like going for another airstream into the Landorus, and I think I their Landorus is coming is coming down this turn, right? They're done on Dynamax. And then I think I like going for a Sludge Bomb into into the Eliki. Notably, if it is Focus Sash, it's been broke by their own Sand. Okay. So if it's, if we do out outspeed them this turn, which I don't think we will, it doesn't oh, matter. This they pulled now. it back out. Yep. I was yeah, but, again. yeah, that's unfortunate because we can't we're not gonna deal any damage to that one. Oh, it's immune to poison. Yep Maybe we should have just tried to uh, KO there their other one yeah. It would have been really bad if they went for max guard this turn But I think outside of that it would have been fine Do they want to yeah, this is this is completely fine we essentially traded our Dynamax for theirs, because theirs is ending this turn. Yep. Uh, we can bring in the Urshifu, which has Sucker Punch, uh, which is going to move first as long as they continue to attack. So as long as they click an attacking move, Urshifu cleans up this end game pretty well. Notably, uh, Nihilego is faster than Landorus, so we can Sludge Wave them this turn. We can go for the Sucker Punch into Metagross. Actually, do I like Sucker Punch, or do we like Wicked Blow more? Wicked Blow always crits, so I believe it's always going to do more damage. But Sucker Punch means that we can outspeed the Eliki in the end game. Because we, we only get one move because we have a choice item. I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to Sludge Bomb this to finish it off. Yep. Hopefully it's not very effective. Yeah, it, it should. We're at plus two special attack. All right, cool. So, chat, if this turn goes badly, if we lose this game, it's because Jeff locked us into Wicked Blow. See? See, Carter's learning. <laughs> I don't want to take any fault here. <laughs> so you got to believe in the crits, Carter. You got to just, you gotta just right, run, so him, run him down. Uh, that attack always crits. So <laughs> yeah, that's why you believe in it, man. <laughs> you you got me. You figured me out. So if they have Electro Web here, it could be annoying, but I don't think it's enough to take out Urshifu. So Wicked Blow, 
we can only select Wicked Blow, unfortunately. But I think oh, Wicked Blow is the only attack we use for the rest of the game. Yep. Okay. As long as as long as he is in, that's the only move we can select. So if you would switch out and back in, you can then re uh, select a different move. We're faster. Yeah, we're at plus two attack or plus two speed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's easy See? game. Easy game. See, Just like we drew it up. Look, we didn't get to the Great Ball League by being average, Carter. I, I think it might have done been related to like the seven win streak we had with Gold Duck or something, but you know. <laughs> well, I mean, the the duck is busted. I just I just want to let you know, Carter, that I'm gonna need you to ship me a new code for the Gold Duck team with just like close your eyes and pick a random mon over to Persia. <laughs> Literally anything. Other just than like Persia. pick a competitive mon and replace Persian with it. Okay, I will I will get that done. If not today, then tomorrow. <laughs> What um what does it take to, to share a team code? Is it just as simple as like gearing it and then hitting export, or like is there more that goes into it than that? Okay, so the the screen where you uh, I believe it's manage team uh, it's like rental teams or something, and then there's two tabs. There's manage teams you're renting and uh, manage teams you're sharing. So instead of going to the rental code, uh, you go to sharing and you just select an empty spot, select a team you want to upload, and then hit publish. Chat, chat seems chat seems to think the Golduck team would like a Raichu, but we have a we have a Moltre or we have the Zapdos in that team already, yeah, right? Yeah, we do have a Zapdos, which is actually problematic next to the Raichu, um, because it would draw in all of the electric attacks from the the Moltres. I mean the Zapdos. Okay, they are extremely extremely hard trick room. Okay. Which is really, really, really bad for this team. Uh, Tell me the good news, Carter. Come on now. Stop, stop talking me up. The only way we have to stop Trick Room. So we have to bring it. Bring who? Nihiligo. Okay. I know who that one is. It's in English. And then... Then we get into the weird parts here. And I think it's correct to have... Thunderous next to it. Okay. Um, with... I like Rotom. And I like Urshifu. So... I, I remembered which squiggle that was. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> JV <laughs> Epic Maybe Gamer, thanks for the follow. Or just a little rearranged. Um, so Nihilego... For some reason, gains access to Trick Room. So if they go for Trick Room, we can use Trick Room ourselves to get rid of it. Neat. Okay. Yeah. Which is the only way on this team we actually have to prevent or to get rid of Trick Room. Outside of being super aggressive and knocking them out. Okay, they don't have a setter up front. They don't have a Trick Room setter up front. So we are free to do whatever we want. And we're basically always starting on our free beam attack with uh, Nihiligo. Right? It might actually be... I, I, actually, yeah. I like Meteor Beam into Vaporeon. Okay. And I want to go for the Dynamax and go for uh, a Max Lightning into the Vaporeon as well. So you don't think just one will kill it? You think we need both? Well, worst case scenario, you knock it out, and then the other attack goes into the escape. Oh, okay, right. So you don't lose your attack if they one would be lethal. Got it. Okay. Okay, so they are withdrawing the the uh, the Vaporeon going into the Corsola, which I believe gains access to Trick Room, but it's not gonna like this double up very well. Someone in chat asked if you could check the the EVs or IVs of rental Pokemon. Yes, um, you can go into, whenever you check the team, you can pull up their summary of each Pokemon, um, which then will showcase their individual stats, um, and you can check based on what their stat totals are. You can't, you don't have a end client way of saying, okay, this has 100 EVs and HP, but based on this attack or this HP stat, it has roughly this many okay 
And if it's not a rental team, you can see in client what the EVs are? No, there's there's no okay. way at all to, unfortunately. Okay. So regardless of rental client or not, you're still doing it manually? Yep. All right. See, Jeff, we got, we, we got a knockout. I'm not unconvinced that that beam wouldn't have killed it on its own, though. Uh, you cut out on me. It would have killed I, what? I said I'm not unconvinced the beam wouldn't have killed it on its own, though. I'm not either. So <laughs> that really hurt. That was rude, opponent. All right. Well, we're three to three now. Uh, Rotom is exceptional here. Uh, they have a Vaporeon IP here and a Vaporeon. Yeah. So, oh, because Rotom's got a fire attack, right? Yeah, we have overheat. Okay, Aromatisse is the scariest thing on the field right now because it can set Trick Room, but if we get rid of Escavalier, Trick Room doesn't matter. Okay. So if we just go for the Overheat and we go for the Max Lightning into Aromatisse, that should be... That should do a lot. We don't want to guarantee to kill this? If they Max Guard, it's really bad. Okay, they yeah, that's fair. Guard, yep. It's really bad for us. They have a quick claw. Well, that can't be good. So quick claw, I believe, makes it where they're attacking plus one priority this turn. Um, so that's going to get to attack before everything else. And I assume S Cavalier is gonna S eviscerate us. Probably. Okay. That one was kind of a reach. I'm just throwing that one out there. Listen, I'm tr I'm trying here. We've gone a long time. Look at that. Not even Habsies. Get bent. <laughs> Get out of here. So this is actually great because um, Thunderous has the Defiant ability, which is the opposite of competitive. So anytime we have a stat lowered, our attack gets plus two. Nice. So because they lowered our special attack, they raised our attack by two. Okay, so we, just and got they... free, we just got a free KO there. And almost a free KO there. Nice. Had they yeah. not dropped their special attack, that would have knocked it out. Okay, and their quick claw was only for that turn, so we should go before that next turn and kill it with the overheat. Then. Yep. So we can go for the overheat, and we can go for another max lightning into the Vaporeon, and that should seal this game. Unless for some reason their quick claw triggers again... Which, if it does, that just means they're going to give us another Defiant boost and we can for sure take out their Vaporeon. It doesn't matter. This, this should be gone. Bye, Delete. Delete. <laughs> Noise. Noise. We just won on turn three. <laughs> good, good beats. Good beats, nice. Be aggressive. Be e aggressive. I, I told you at the top of the show that uh, we can we can win on turn three or we can win on turn twenty. So yeah, I really I like the I feel like we showed a good good range of stuff. I like uh, I like I like what we did. Your teams were good. Where do I see my where do I see my record? Can I see my record? I gotta click okay, back into you here. You can go into ranked battles here. And then uh, on doubles, you can hit X, which Sweet. will update your rank. So we were 14, we're, we went 16, 14 and 2 in 16 battles. Sweet. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out today, Carter. This was a lot of yeah, fun. This, this was a blast. This is an absolute blast. I am very glad you asked me on, Jeff. Yeah, and it's really awesome. We got over 200 people in here to close out the night. I really appreciate it. Remember to check out Carter's podcast here. Um, he can go ahead and link his Discord in there as well for stuff like that. They recommend checking out the VCG subreddit for stuff. If you're one of my uh, Twitch subs, I'm going to create a channel for this in the subs Discord server where we can chat about that. And Carter's actually in that server too, so I'm sure he wouldn't mind if people ask questions in there. If he's in there, you can. He's Mr. Missouri on uh, on the subs Discord server. Um, if you enjoyed the content and you're new to the channel in general, I'm here uh, seven days a week usually. I take some mornings and some evenings off, but I'm one or the other every single day for a few hours at a time. You can check out my schedule up here on my website and i also have a youtube channel where this full session is going to go up there so this is my first time playing competitive pokemon vgc so if you want to see me from the start with carter kind of guiding me through we started out with a really sweet aggressive gold duck lineup and uh won through a whole bunch of battles with that so that'll all go up there I'll also post a shorter highlight video probably about 20 minutes with some of the best battles from the evening if you don't want to sit through a full stream and uh 
I don't, I don't know exactly when we're going to get back to this. I have my schedule lined up for the rest of the week, but definitely, definitely going to get back to this at some point. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, uh, yeah, thanks again. Sure. Everybody, uh, have a good night. Have a good one, everyone.